Crouch. Bind. Set. Joe presents the House of Rugby together with Guinness. Jumbo Jumbo, welcome to House of Rugby 2020. <laughs> brought to you by Joe together with our very good friends at Guinness. Do you want to talk, we talk through that absolute nonsense? Fresh back from Kenya. Oh, so you're looking at using oh, the local li- dialect, Look at the Swahili just to start oh, the new oh, year. Oh, right. Um, so, did one you of ever... the most incredible places on planet Earth. How do they take you arriving in a Panama when they're one of those travellers' hats and referring to everyone as, hello, you know, um, I, I, can, I can live here, but apart from the flies and the incessant no, rain. I went Robinson Crusoe. I was like, beach and dreadlo- uh, dreadlocks. Uh, dreadlocks. Um, dreadlocks. Nothing more worse than a white middle-class person with dreadlocks. Do you think? No, it's never. Okay. You see a few uh, on the King's Road, actually. Oh, no, oh yeah, no. I, I, honestly, I went to uh, Mount... you ever get invited into the King's <laughs> I went to Mount Tipidabadu and I trundled everywhere. <laughs> you were one of those standing outside saying, please, can I come in? Please, please. 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 Oh, no, I know no, people. I know, people. I know Alex Payne. I'm like, <laughs> get out. Uh, happy New Year to all of you from all of us. It is an absolute honour and a pleasure to have with us dressed a little bit like a Christmas tree, some might say, in a post festival. <laughs> Brave. From top to toe in British Racing Green, the Aston Martin of front row forwards. Dr. Ellis well, Henge, how are you? Matt Cash- Cash is on these days, that new contract. He'll probably be driving an Aston Martin. I'll fucking Aston Martin. <laughs> <laughs> you look no, yeah, very I'm, smart, very I'm well. Good. How Cheers. are you? Uh, yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. Uh, a bit sore training, but. Today? Yeah. Loving it? Yeah. I love yeah. winter rugby. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not. Like, well. He hates New it. Re- New Year's it. reservation, stick a smile yeah, we, on everything. Yeah, we hate it. Exactly we said right. we said it should, should be a summer sport, didn't we? 100%. Yeah. And, and a, and a three-month season. But you know what? Every time we said it was a summer sport, right? Paid less. All the keynotes were like, Ugh, what about lower league levels, you know, hard pitches? What about children? I was like, oh, fuck them. We're we'll talking about the professional game. Well, they can play in the w- winter and the rain. For I'd, fancy, yeah, yeah. yeah. Forever giving. No, because you um, do long, you know, clubs can earn more money. Now the problem with all the restraints. Uh, longer hospitality at post-match games, better weather, more flowing rugby. Yeah. Is this part of yours and Dylan's global takeover? What, when we going to set up a rival RPA? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't spoken to him about that. We're still missing the billionaire backer. Right. Any billionaires who listen to House of Rugby, we'd like to set up a rival gang. <laughs> sitting on your Ellis side. will be number one henchman. Um, we'll get that, that sorted out. But do you, do you know, like, apparently he only ever wears matching gears. Like yeah, co-ord, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, top to bottom. If it don't match, I won't wear it my way. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I did, the hat, I mean, the, the trainers aren't green, yeah. but they are a bit green actually. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I tell the camera, they're, they're khaki. They're I khaki. like tan. Shades are shades are green. Yeah. Um, no, I, I don't know. Back home, I saw people like if it don't match, people don't wear it. Really, genuine. Is that right? It's sometimes you feel like a bit of a dickhead, like you look a bit like a Power Ranger. Do you know what I mean? I look like the Green Ranger today, and then I put my all black on the Black Ranger, and I think I look like a dickhead. But I'm so yeah. used to it now yeah. that I don't even bat an eyelid. Like if it matches, it appeals to me. Yeah, but so. is it only? Is it like straight good gear tracksuits? Like you can't, like you yeah. wouldn't wear like a Lacoste right, or tee, but and a slazzy. No, nah, 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 me, fine. But that's purely based on wealth and yes, yeah, yeah, fine. Because you earn a bit better because you're better than those I'm, days. Like back in the I day, you're better probably... than my mates. No, but, no, but like you yeah, always... I know what you mean. Back in the day, I couldn't afford to buy a nice. Now, nice, now you're like, yeah. it's now I'm doing right. all right. Yeah. Boss. yeah, boss, yeah, and also D squared for the the, the absolute purist at the top. Very, Love it. very nice. It's the best break. What did you get for Christmas? A toothbrush and an eighty pound donation to a rhino in Kenya. Did you really? Yeah, well, you every mean, year. You know, he's known as the baby rhino. Yeah, no, yeah. We're it was a baby rhino. <laughs> I think snow leopard last year. Really? We uh, met. I met our elephant. You know, I mentioned our elephant the other day, and Keisha. <laughs> We adopted What's happened elephant. to you? What's happened to you? You're Honest to God. We, met, what we adopted an elephant before we went to Kenya. <laughs> a year ago. Did you? What's we it? were talking... Uh, pr- perhaps you weren't here. Perhaps no, I don't you think were, I was. you in the jungle of your own. Yeah, I probably was, yeah. I was probably talking with someone far more intelligent about the fact we adopted a baby elephant. So right. you've now got... You've got a snow leopard and a rhino. Yeah. Wow. And a certificate of spirit. But they haven't got names. Oh. Like yours. I met... I yeah, I met Akishi yeah. yesterday in Nairobi. Nice. Very sweet. And she's got a hole in her trunk because she got caught in a poacher's No trunk. way. She's an orphan elephant. I've yeah. never heard such nonsense. But I tell you what, I'll, I'll follow this up by the conversation. So I was watching, obviously we were in Veganuary. I'm vegan yeah. two days a week now. Are you? Are you? Yeah, it doesn't really count. Is though. that a choice or is I, that... I watched, obviously, that... Game changes. And then I watched the debunking of it. Yeah. And then I watched the debate. Fine. And I'll come to the conclusion, Young I absolutely hates me for it, as you can imagine, no, 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 being no. from farm and stock. Yeah. Um, that... I looked at like the blood reports and stuff, and I thought actually, if I want my, if I want to operate at highest capacity, then if I'm banging loads of beetroot and my blood's a bit clearer, then that's the way to do it. Yeah, but that's that's the so clever I'm thing. Only, way of doing it. So I eat red meat Monday, Tuesday, white meat 
for two days and then two days vegan and then whatever I want on the post game. Yeah, but see, see that's clever because there's so, well, two things I'll cover it quickly because pe people are into training and stuff. Watch Is there a book where we can find out? No, no, I haven't, I haven't written a book yet. But essentially, so everyone jumps on board with the vegan stuff, right? But what people forget is that ancestrally, some parts of the country would be more meat eaters, other would be more grains, more yeah, vegetables, in right? different regions and that. In different regions. So your body reacts differently. So people go, I'm becoming a vegan, right? Those people on that Game Changers documentary, the athletes, they were obviously suited to a vegetable-based diet, right? Yeah. And, and whatever it was without meat but it doesn't necessarily suit me and if you, you anyone's gonna swap you've got to have your bloods done right so you work out what you are susceptible because you know with being a full vegan you have to supplement B, B vitamins and other bits and pieces yeah. that you don't get but also it might not suit you you could actually be quite ill and worse off it just let everyone know I'm icing my ankles and yes, my why have you training. arrived with your foot in a bucket yeah, I've got my foot in a bucket you can't see it under the table so if you keep seeing me swapping it and grimacing I've got it in a, a bucket I've got my, my timer going <laughs> I did some sparring today got a uh, a knee on my toe and uh, my ankle's very sore so I've got to do it but ever the professional ever the professional oh, I respect it got to be prepared you haven't even winced no quite, I, I'm not quite, good with that. I'm holding your knee aren't I <laughs> oh, the tracksuit burnt a hole in the Hugo Boss quite amazing sparkly toenails yeah I have got sparkly toenails at the moment I'm back to painting them actually which, which weirdly enough I thought it was all fun and games really enjoyed it done it for years used to upset people um, mainly Owen Farrell, it was quite funny. Um, but like, mate, I don't understand. Why are you doing that? You're just a dickhead. You're a tendency to see dickhead. I was like, actually, Owen, that's exactly what I am. Um, and you're not, uh, you're not wrong. You've got me. Arrest me. Um, but with the uh, but with the with the toes, when you're putting on your pad and your gum shield in for the first sparring session, when you're going to fight someone, you sort of look down at your toes. And went, I can't be doing probably it. not a good idea that. And they went, oh, what's your thing? And I went. Yeah, but I, You've got to back I've, I've overthought this. Do you know what I mean? I've overthought, I, I thought it was fun and games, but now we're going to fight someone. It's a little bit different. Yeah. That being said, in the gym today was a man, I shit you not, when I walked in, was doing this. Right? Like some sort of weird cap yeah, capoeira. Yeah, but not even, but it wasn't that, mate. It was like, wah, 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 punch, 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 like bullshit. Walking around talking to himself, and I said to one of the guys, oh, what's happening with this guy? Oh, he's crazy, he's crazy. Like, he does this stuff. Yeah. And he goes, he normally trains in a top hat, right? And I said, fuck off. Oh, I said, fuck God. off. It's not, it's not true. Like, it's bullshit. I was on this salt bike warming up. Lo and behold, he walks past with earphones on and a top hat. Apparently some sort of circus performer. He's wearing a top hat and he's training, doing a jiu-jitsu and fighting in a top hat. But apparently if they make him spar, he's now got to wear the top hat. So he's, he's written his death warrant, basically. Someone wants to knock it off. Yeah. <laughs> but I, yeah. I thought it was like... Think of. If you, I thought if you, were, if you were good in the gym, you got a top hat. So I said to the coach, I said... Like a black belt. Yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> you Dan. But the, co the coach said to me, he goes, oh no, it's like, you know, 10th Dan, you, you know, you're unbelievable. He said, to get a top hat, it's 20 Dan. 20th Dan. So... But I mean, there's dudes walking around with top hats on. Another guy was, another guy was like, I caught him walking up to the bag. Yeah. I was the only one in there, and he was talking to it, going, "What? What yeah. would you say?" And like hitting it like he was in a club. Mate, people do the weirdest things well, in fighting. People, if people ain't used to fighting, are they? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's really unnatural for them. So yeah. you can imagine when you go in and you train to fight, <laughs> how unnatural that feels. You don't know what to do. Some <laughs> fight, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. People must be like, "What the fuck do I do?" It's, it's, it's bags. So Eye and a bag up, like, it gonna fucking hit you back, relax. Oh, Although you, I've you... seen people hit back. <laughs> <laughs> Come back That's me. That's out, me. Yeah. That was like when Sean Edwards used to make me hold a Swiss ball by my head. And he'd be like, right, mate, oh, wait, hold this for me. And he'd hold the Swiss ball. But he'd go, right, get your face near it. And he'd get your face near it. And he'd punch it. And honest to God, it sometimes he'd hit you in the side of the head. It, it, it was reverberating round your neck, but you couldn't do it. You had to keep an eye on him like that. He'd be like, mate, mate, hold it up. You'd be like, sorry, Sean. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you like, why I'm sorry. Make, why do you make you do that? Because you were an academy kid and sh okay. f***ing just do as you're told. Academy savage, yeah. Academy savage, yeah. Would you ever fancy getting in the ring? Yeah, I'm keen. I think like... Do you watch it, follow it, enjoy yeah, it? Yeah, I follow it. My friends follow it really close. So whenever I go back home, it's like, oh, this fight's on. They all got UFC fight pass for however much it is a month. And obviously the Bellator's quite big now. Yeah. MVP's sparking everyone out. Although he got lo lost the other day. Didn't oh, no, he won, he won. He won two fights he, ago, he lost, yeah. One yeah. in Japan and then two fights ago. Before lost. he got lost, yeah, yeah, trying to get up, yeah. I can, yeah, I can imagine that was a big ego knock for him but he's he not like, like he that really fire, but they're not like he? that that's the weirdest thing with the fighters you expect them all to be like ego maniacal but say for example when I shake your hand right give me a hand we'd shake it like a firm handshake whenever you meet any of these fighters they're always like this no 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 give me a hand they always go like this like real soft oh really yeah real soft probably don't or, give it the, like, or give it yeah. the full fist bump that's the easiest now I think that's the best way to go about your business is get in real early as you're walking up to someone to greet them just give them the <laughs> like even a side fish, you know what I mean? Because then you can recover to the handshake. Yeah. If people come in like that straight away, you're like, fucking hell, he's gonna hit me. But if you give it that one, I think it's a bit 
Do you know what I mean? When people come hand over, over the top, yeah. over, over the, the top, top, that fucks me off, Steve. Like, I don't like when people are over the top me. But what's right. the rule though? What's the rule? Because I wanted to talk about this for, for a while. What is the rule about people you don't know and elderly people coming and going, all right, bro? Well, Listen, <laughs> I, I actually, I'm not going to give you the full details on this story because I don't want the bloke to be upset. But I met someone, he was, he was like, oh, Ellis. I was like, yeah, you're right, mate. Like, how are you getting on? Rare, 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 rare. My mate, I love that. That's my catchphrase at the moment, rare, rare, rare. Anyway, I've seen this bloke a few times now, cross paths in Leicester now and then, and I swear to you, yeah, for some, first time I met him, he was like, oh, really sort of upper class and spoke. As an, as he does, he can speak however you want to me. Is that or not? Not as much. I'm not joking. He's 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 near you. He oh, ain't no. far off. He's All near right. you. Hey that. Welcome yeah. to my circles. Um, <laughs> but now he started. He's 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 coming in like, hey brother and hey bro, and I'm like, he's like safe man. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, listen. I had to say to him the other day. I was like, listen. <laughs> Fuck off! Like, <laughs> what are you doing? You're, Set, ma you're making down. Yeah, you're making me not like you. Like, calm down. <laughs> you don't need to change. Like, to because then I seen him chat to one of the other boys, and he was like, "How are you getting on, mate?" Well, like, and I was down. like, "No way!" As this guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. As this guy got on, he's fist pumped me, and he's gone to someone else, and he's like, "How are you getting on, mate?" Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, Coley or someone. <sighs> yeah, you don't want to give that to Coley. Give that Coley. We just look at you and break your hand off. Every time I go to Coley, I give him a fist bump, and he's. Cabbage, in your shirt. cabbage yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting a serious amount of cabbage. Well, at the I want to get a T-shirt right that says "Say No to Bro," right? Yeah. Because I, I'll go to events and, and I. So what I did, I'm one of these people. So if you went like that, I come, I come straight in over the top because yeah. I refuse to do that. You if I do it, my friends, I'll do it. People you know, aren't it? yeah. yeah. But, but even then, it's like there's a certain age limit to that. Yeah. I could walk in the fifty, go, "Fast, mate, love, mate, big man, big man." I'm like, mm. "No, sir." I don't know you and I'm nice, not hugging you and nice it's very you, cringy yeah. so say no to bro so fans out there people like that no, say no to bro that's a new policy it's either a straight handshake fist bump if it's awkward because there's nothing worse than meeting someone going for a hug they go for a handshake you go for a fist bump you go for a hug and the chest folds up the hand folds in you get your ass out you can't yeah. it's, the whole night's ruined you just give me one of my resolutions we're going to do some New Year's resolutions at the end of the show <laughs> um, I don't know what we're talking about here so this is your show as we said a little bit earlier on, we have to go wherever you want. Um, but I, often the producer side puts a lot of work in, and normally we get a sort of a page of A4. We've got we've got five pages of topics oh, here, God. which is great testament to you. Everyone says nowadays that professional sports people are robots, media trained. They don't give anything away. Fair to say, at what twenty four? No, almost twenty five now. Nearly twenty five. Happy month, birthday! What, January, isn't it? Veganuary. Uh, February. Um. <laughs> February. Yeah. February the sixteenth. Happy Two birthday! Two days after Valentine's. Very day. nice. Cards on the way. Mm -hmm. um, you are living a good life in terms of. Is it fair to say true to yourself, etc.? Is that something you pride yourself on? Are you somebody who likes to? Say what you see, as opposed to what you're told to uh, say. I call a spade a spade, yeah, and I make that quite clear for me off with pretty much everyone I meet. Why is that? I think it's just more testament to my old man, really, the way I've been brought up. He's not the loudest voice in the room, but he's a very straightforward bloke. If someone's pissing him off, he's always told me, never let someone do X, Y, and Z, and it's yeah. probably why I'm the way I am. But yeah, I've always been brought up, if, if someone's, if you're not getting on with something or something's annoying, you never leave it to rest or like, do you know what I mean? Be yeah. reactive, never sort of go away and bitch about things. Or yeah. So if someone asks me a question, I'm going to, give them a straightforward answer, but some people like it, some people don't. I mean, I've made friends off and I've lost friends off it. So I'm not, I ain't gonna lose sleep over it because yeah. at least my, my it's clear, do you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not going home thinking, fucking hell, I should have said that. Yeah. I'll never leave a room. I respect that a lot. Yeah. I, I wish it's something I actually did talk about in New Year's resolution of having those awkward <clears throat> conversations. You know, it's so tough. much so we it don't. Easy. It's very it tough. Easy. Like I, but I, I saw the guys in some of the gyms, the, guy, the guys that I look up respecting them as that. You know, people, they just come and talk. You know, it's so easy when you walk over and say, How are you? Good. Or what's this? Actually, do you know what? It wasn't good what you did that. I didn't like that. You don't, yeah. have, to be a, you don't have to be a nightmare about it. You've got to be reasonable. But I think being honest and saying straight talking, I, I really respect it. I love it. When I very first saw kind of Ellis's kind of first interview stuff where he was outspoken and said what he thought, I thought, brilliant. Yeah. In a world where people like panic about everything, shut everything down, you know, you might not get, you know, you might not put him on a, you know, certain app, you know, certain company stuff because that's what they freak out. It's the same way people don't use me because they, they, you know, my quote was, we're not sure what's going to come out of his mouth. Well, I'm not sure what's going to come out of my mouth. But most of the time, hopefully, it's based on some some level of common sense. But I, I, I love it that he does that. I think it's so important. So you, I, I might, 
am I right to say, you, quite, was it quite a tough upbringing, childhood? Was it was it Noel West Estate in Noel West? Yeah, in Bristol. I ain't gonna love a twist, but like, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't easy by any by any means. But I'm sure other people have faced their their ups and their downs in their childhood. Yeah. Mine are probably different to Hask's. Mine are definitely different to yours, but yeah. um, he fell off his penny farthing a few. Yeah, times. that's, that's what I mean. It's everyone's got different challenges, aren't they? And you, you obviously. What do you What do you remember of being eight, nine, ten? Because I've, I've read before that you said you were very angry as a kid. I was. Yeah, I was quite short sighted. Not vision wise, obviously, but yeah. in terms of if something happened, I'd again be very sort of in the moment. I'd just lose my shit. Um, it happens now, now and again. To the day, but yeah. not as bad. So um, I used to sort of throw my toys out of the cart. Used to I went through a lot of wardrobes when I was younger, like just ripping shit apart. So I didn't have any wardrobes for a long time. Yeah, clothes always on the floor. All my furniture taken out of my room. Like I didn't have my everything was out of my room basically. If I ever misbehaved, like so I was <laughs> I was a bit of a little shit as a kid. But different places got different challenges, aren't they? Like I yeah. said, I can imagine you've gone through a lot when you were younger, and I'd find them very hard experiences as well yeah. But, yeah it's i mean it's very very different obviously but uh, and it, you've had family members who've, who've had it particularly tough you've, um, have you, you've said in the past that those are doors you'll never open are they doors that you don't want to open you you've got no interest I don't know, in it's, it's my fa it's, it's it's my family isn't it? I, 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 i've got a lot of i've got a big family um it's more so my mum's side my dad's side is lovely as well um and they're very very different people um but again you you, you take good traits out of like both sides so um, a few of my mum's side have been in prison for a yeah. long time, um, but I'm not going to name them on. No, no, absolutely. Do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll, I'll never put them but out there really. Do you, do you to... speak to them now? Is yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Contact? So... And are, are, are they quite sort of, uh, they put an arm around you and, and sort of say, you've got an opportunity here, don't blow no, it? that's kind my of friends. So my friends have done that. My family are happy for me because obviously I can financially support everyone now, yeah. um, which I'm proud of myself, but my friends are more so... Although I help them out now and then, they're very happy for me. And they say, look, mate, don't come. Like, when I was trying to come back to Bristol as hard as I could, they were like, nah, mate, there's nothing here. Nothing's changed, you know what I mean? It's still, still no, like, you're not missing anything. Yeah. I've got a friend called Jed who, he says it now still. And I'm like, Jed, all right, mate, I'm not going to fucking come back and rob a bank. But I suppose it's testament to them that they keep reminding me that nothing, you ain't missing out on anything, do you know what I mean? He's, yeah. I, I drive back and I see Jed. He works on the, he works on the road. He's a road worker. He's diligent. Like he turns up early. He's a hard working man. But I think to myself, fucking hell, this could have been me. Yeah. Which ain't, ain't a bad job. He earns good whack in that. But I'm doing something that I'm very privileged to be able to do. And I've met brilliant people who had good experiences. Yeah. I've gone abroad a lot more than I would have. Apparently, not as much as I could have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you retire. Yeah, but um, yeah, like I said, it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Change layers now again. <laughs> <laughs> Indicators on, apparently. Um, when you mentioned about how angry, have you ever explored why you were angry? Is that something yeah, that you've so looked into? Yeah, so my mum wanted to get it sorted out. Supposedly it was my dyspraxia. Um, you get frustrated very easily because it was like a coordination thing and small build-up thing. Like um, attention span's terrible. I uh, can't concentrate for long because of that. Yeah. So I'd get frustrated and people would be talking <clears> to me and then my body language is poor and I forget that I'm doing it. So everyone's always on at me. Fucking stand up straight or yeah, you're not trying. Your handwriting's terrible. In school, it was quite testing for me. Like I used to have a lot of arguments with teachers and I've gone back to the schools and I've had those conversations with yeah. teachers now and they apologise now and I think, fuck it, whatever. I've done. Do you know what I mean? I've yeah. kicked out of class a few times. It ain't no big deal. But... It was hard when I was younger because I didn't know, I felt like really uncomfortable all the time. I'm still like that sometimes now when I enter places that I don't feel I belong and I'm starting to sort of, you get you get older, don't you? You, you, yeah. you suddenly realise that like, no one really gives a fuck. Like, and also yeah. nobody nobody feels like they belong anywhere. Everyone exactly. feels like they've yeah, got imposter yeah. syndrome. Nobody, that, what's that thing called? Imposter syndrome. That's the one, called, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no matter how confident someone is, when they get on that stage first, like sort of five seconds, they think, actually, I'm, I shouldn't be yeah, here. Yeah, but also yeah. What, some people are so outwardly confident because they're so inwardly crappy yeah, themselves. Yeah, or they're, yeah. so, they're so worried. Like, I think if you started doing, <clears> so, I mean, I'd, I'd probably go on to but if you start like seeing therapists or doing psychology, the most interesting stuff is when the people start talking stuff about you and you start learning lessons. Like I'm, you know, I've always used it I'm going to use it again now I'm back into sport use it for personal stuff um, talking to someone because I think it's so important um, because you learn but you also suddenly see it in other people like I'm a big fan of watching people's body language so I you talk about you know when we very first met I remember um, 
you know, obviously, I didn't watch a lot of rugby. So I remember coming down to coming down into to the Paddy Hill Park in the, in the dining room. Who the uh, fuck's this? Uh, yeah, I, like, I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Right, and this obviously, little prick in a tracksuit. <laughs> matching, matching, it was though. Right, so he's sitting there, like obviously, like he's a big unit. Yeah. Right, he's got he suffers from you know RBF resting bitch face. So he's got the, he's got he's looking angry. Right, we're all talking around uh, having food. I, I was joking and said hello, hello, mate. He said hello, mate. As we're talking, he hasn't really said anything, and we're like joking, laughing. It's not really like, and I'm thinking. Who the fuck is this guy? Like, he, I mean, he's sitting, like he's obviously being not unit, laughing at like, my gags. Well, well, a that was yeah, but I knew he, I thought he had from his hearing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I thought to myself, um, you know, who's this guy? You know, it's a hell of an attitude to have. Like, I'm like, fuck, it's going to be a long old time. You know, I'll be interested to see what you're like in training. Was you this know, pre the Australia tour? Yeah, you yeah. came in off like a couple of hours of rugby. Four months, yeah, 126 minutes. Um, Strong. Five prem games, I think. Um, yeah, so literally, it was mad. No one had a clue who I was. Yeah, I mean, that's what I mean. Like, that's quite what nice, we, that, though. But, yeah, but that's, it was quite refreshing, do you know what I mean? To be in an environment where it was good for me. It was a good experience to like, get trapped in the deep end. You have to adapt. Like, I was like, fucking hell, I've literally watched these blokes for the last few years. I'm not an avid rugby watcher, but... Yeah. One, who, who was most welcoming? Hask, obviously, was... He's... No, you're... He's, I was welcoming, yeah. Well, yeah. Listen, he abuses people, that's him. Do you know what I mean? And as yeah. soon as you sort of first like day, I was like, "Dad, I'm not this bloke out." Like, <laughs> so I was about to say, "That <laughs> was about the demeanor. fifth guest we've had." <laughs> yeah. that, that, but that was his demeanour. So I let you finish. But just, so when I walked in, and he, he, he honestly, I could see him looking. And the best thing was after about an hour of like him desk, I could see that he was like. I'm obviously a prime candidate. He's going to want to knock me out. I'm like everything that this bloke doesn't yeah. want to have anything to do. Loud, brash, whatever. But every now and then, I would make a joke and I'd see him like this. He'd put his, he'd put his hat on. He'd put his hat down. His face was small. <laughs> and I could see he was like smiling, but he didn't want to smile. He was like, I'm fucking keeping this tough, tough exterior. So I actually went up to Coley and I was like, mate, who's that bloke who looks like Dredrick Tatum off The Simpsons? I said, is he real handy? Because he's giving me serious evil. Like, do I need to, like, watch my, like, watch my back anyway? No, he's like, Ellis, he's lovely. He's a bit, you know, he's a bit angry, but he's actually really nice. When I saw him smiling, I was like, I got you here. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, carry on, yeah. We ended up as roomies, didn't we? Yeah, we did, yeah. Best you of friends up, ever you were. You ended up as what? Roommates. Stop. But I'm always welcome. Like, I would always say hello. But you like you my said, shirt for me. I did iron your shirt for you. But I will <laughs> always say that I was sorted quickly. <laughs> but I was saying that you know I would I would shake your hand and say hello. But you're you're basically saying essentially I'm a complete antithesis of you. Like I was I was something that you wanted to go knock out after complete about the opposite, first day. Yeah. yeah. But I wasn't used to that sort of that rugby crack. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. of everything sort of taken jest. I wasn't used to that because coming from champ rugby into a Premiership club as well. It's obviously complete. No one's really got like high profile in the champ especially yeah. at the time as well Bristol were going through a bit of a rough patch so I came from while well, I was like an under, under 20s I was real comfortable I knew everyone all growing up age groups and stuff back to the champ club where I was back to being like a little academy bitch like handing out the drinks at socials and stuff and then I went into Leicester and then bang straight into another bigger pond where I had absolutely no say and yeah, it was, it was a weird, like, absolute flip my world upside down in a few months and I could not explain it to anyone. So I was so used to being in Bristol, being able to go home and get the bus home and chat to my dad about Azure Day. I remember first day at Bristol, I got punched in the mouth by James Hall. You ever played against James Hall? Uh, I think Eddie yeah, Hall's yeah. older brother. Yeah. yeah. Punched me in the mouth. And I thought he was joking at first. You know, you get adrenaline when was you this, get punched. Was get this punch. training and... So it was post... Post training, walk, it was actually in pre season for the first time I've ever been at a rugby club. Walking back from training, boiling hot, lovely day, whatever. I'm with Rupert Freestone, who was a hooker back in the day, a good mate of mine now, um, and James Orr. And out of nowhere, being the posh prick Rupert is, I'm sure he won't mind me saying that. <laughs> Genji, who, who's harder at you in Hawley? And I was quite arrogant, and it's the worst question you could ask me. And I was like, I'll, I'll bang him out. <laughs> but she, like, I was laughing when I said, I was like, I'll bang him out. Bang, straight on my lip. I got a little, that side, I think, a little scar there. But he's hit me and I haven't really felt it and it's, it's split me, but I could feel the blood on my... Like... And then suddenly, bang, I've seen red. And Joe Joyce, who I was mates with, we going through the academy, he's like, jumped up. He's like, Genji, no, 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 no. I'm not going to fucking kill you. Like, <laughs> I'm going crazy, you know, like, first ever day on the job and I've been banged in the face. The old man's obviously told me if anyone ever hits you, I'm back. So I've gone straight for him. I didn't get my hands on him. So I was still fuming. I was like pacing up around the changing room. Like, Joyce, what am I going to do? And um, it was basically, I got warned pre like in advance. My mum makes banging cakes. It was cake club. And I had to bring a cake in. So I brought in a cheesecake, key lime pie. So I've gone to the kitchen to get a knife. Oh. 
to cut my key lime pie for the boys. Yeah. I've walked back through the showers and the changing rooms at Bristol at the time at Clifton, real narrow corridor. You, everyone can see you. And my academy change room was the one dripping with water at the end yeah, of the room. Yeah, stinking, so yeah. So I've walked past everyone with this big fucking kitchen knife <laughs> with my lips still pissed with blood. And they're like, catch you now. <laughs> <laughs> they thought I was going to go and fucking find <clears throat> James Hall. And that, yeah. And that was my first day of professional did, rugby. Did you resolve it? Did you? Did you, did I, you I'm actually Hawley get, Sand, yeah. He's just yeah. got probably similar temper to what I had back in the day. Um, he whacked a lot more people, so I knew it wasn't a personal <laughs> time. Yeah. Um, I seen him, I seen him hit yeah, a lot of people. But imagine his demeanor though. Like imagine you had a row, he's been seething, smashing him, I'm gonna kill him. Then he goes, oh, calm down, I'll make the key on pie. Goes off and comes back with a knife. <laughs> How everyone would just literally like, and his demeanor, cause he wouldn't have been smiling. Yeah. would have been dripping blood, like <laughs> walking with his head down with his bowl. But I would have, honestly, I would have yeah. called the police. John, uh, John Harrison was a team manager at the time, he was an ex-copper. And he ran out to me, he's like, hey, let's hit it. And I was like, John, I'm kind of fucking cake. Like, I'm, I'm out in the cake. Like, That's an expression that? for something, yeah. Because yeah. oh. you, had, you had quite a rough and tumble. Do you have, you, had, you got a couple of notches on the... Yeah. How a many did you get? A few. Four. Four. Yeah. Just for rough and tumble or... Three of the four. Three for GPH. Yeah. yeah. But always brought back down to... So I've never been actually convicted. I've never been charge should I say yeah. in, in a in a courtroom it's right. always been right that's the GBH charge and it's been brought down it always and happens I don't you... know. they always try to charge you for the worst and then bring you down you look at me I mean I partly know he's got no idea he's like that he's normally when his carriage come past he opens the window his footman <laughs> just shoots the bloke shoots the, you, don't, you don't get in there do you less about me you yeah. running through with a sabre don't you like that a cutlass <laughs> London bus for 50 yards <laughs> um did, did you did that kind of thing did it make you quite nervous when those kind of things came? Or is it just a shrug of the shoulders? And you, you'd seen quite a lot of it from mates and family. And uh, at the time, when sort of it all comes on top, I remember my worst one was I used to do basketball on a Tuesday. My cousin, Greg Street, captain Great Britain in basketball, he's a hell of an athlete. Really? He's actually a firefighter now. Really? Yeah, proud as punch of him. Good, good, good bloke, like good role model for kids. Yeah. Um, he used to pick me up on a Tuesday, right, for basketball. I come home from school and my school used to finish at 3.45. I'll get an hour and a half bus back home because it was on the other side of Bristol. Mum didn't want me to go to St. Bernadette's because it was where all my mates were going. She thought, right, I'll keep them out of trouble. Send them to Kingswood. Yeah. Kingswood eventually became quite rough itself and then I started getting into trouble at school anyway. Did you become gang leader like in a prison? <laughs> I actually was the complete opposite. I was, oh, right, like, the, fine, I was yeah. like the lowest of the low because okay. I was from the other side of the town. No one really knew me. Um, anyway... I come home from tra from school that night. I was waiting to go to basketball. My cousin used to fucking hate taking me because I was so shit at basketball. Just like literally air ball all the time. They're like, oh, Greg's cousin's coming. Do you know what I mean? He's going to be sick. That nah, air ball every single shot, like dyspraxic. Um, anyway, I was having a nap before I went to basketball. I had all my gears on, do you know what I mean? And then uh, I think I was going at quarter to seven. I was getting picked up by Greg because it's half seven start. And I had a knock on the door. I was like, sort of came up from my days and then the two coppers stood over me and my mum was just in the corner sort of shaking her head and they were like, you can either come down to the station now with us and put you in handcuffs or you come down on your own in your own time. It's up to you. I was like, fuck's sake, what have I done? I literally, every single time my mum rang me, it doesn't happen anymore, thank God, sometimes, but every single time my mum rang me, it was, what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> like, who's at the door? Who's, who's come knocking? And this time, yeah, I got, I got caught, caught out quite badly. And I went down and we actually resolved it because it became a family friend um, that the, the situation happened with. But yeah, at the time you, you get, forgetting it now, like you feel a bit nervy and you're like, fuck, what, what am I going to do? Yeah. But then you sort of look back on it now and you think if you take an adult approach to it, like it sort of all those things can be resolved. But then eventually you have got to stop being a dickhead. Like it's, it's, you can't do that in, normal, in a normal world. And I was quite used to it growing up. Yeah. But then as soon as I hit 16, I was like, I'd get locked away for this. Yeah. So I was 14 at the time when that happened. But right. it's quite lucky I learned quite quickly, especially in the rugby world as well. But then when you turn up on your first day and someone whacks you in the face, what message does that send to me is that this is it's all right to scrap it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's sort of like a rebirth. A yeah, rebirth. I was like, release, release, release the rhino yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Found my shit. mecca. Because yeah. <laughs> I remember you saying something along the lines of what you don't wind ups on the field don't get to you too much because you had was it worse down the off license or something like that? <laughs> yeah, well, you have you see a lot worse down the off license than mm -hmm. now, but um, yeah, everyone's I remember like some of the boys I've spoke to them now, but they're all like, fucking calm down, can you? Wear? Boys, I'm never gonna blow, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I might do one day, hopefully, I don't, but 
yeah, people seem to, like even the refs and stuff, they're saying, you got to calm down. And I'm like, man, I'm only having a laugh. Yeah. Because you, you had one the other day. Who, who were you scrapping with the other day? Or? I can't remember. I forget everything in games. Do, do, do you see what he does though? It's my favourite thing. So that's why <laughs> you can't I can't tell everyone my secret. Oh, I can't tell it, can I? Oh, okay. Well, well. No, I mean next game base for the for the purists. <laughs> when Genji's next time he's in the front row, he, or every now and then for the slightly larger gentleman, he pulls out a little trick to reel out all the other people. And honestly, the first time I saw it, and I was like, everyone goes because again because I knew him because I got to share a room with him. Like it was a weird situation where we were very different people, but he was um, unbelievably you know hardworking. Uh, you know, really lovely guy. I said, we, you know, we got we got him smiling, everything else like that. Um, and also because he he never went, he went hard in training, but was never like a mad. Some people, you know, that whole thing of like, I've got an itchy trigger for it. I'm I'm mad, me. I'm going to go mental at any moment. You can't do that in team sport because at some point I'm going to accidentally catch him with an elbow. As long as you apologise and don't, you know, something might happen. But he was brilliant on that tour. And we bonded. We shared a room. We got on. We stayed in touch. You know, when I. All my through my career in the fighting stuff, he's been talking to me. I mean, it's him and his mate Sam Harris keep wanting to get me in the room to fight him. Your, your mind's a hype man. I'll, I'll, I'll back that. I'll back that. I was like, I'm not fighting Ellis. Please do not do this. But he, want, he, he loves the Bellator stuff, wants to come down training and everything else. And, and we always stay in touch. We've got on really, really well. But it, it, it is kind of, you know, interesting those that, 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 that mentality of it, you know, it, yeah. It, because. You know, you, you, I just love, though, that when I saw him do that stuff, I'm like, he's controlled yeah. and it's funny and he knows how to razz people up. Yeah. And it's a bit like Joe Marler-esque in his certain way of doing it. But when you see Ellis do it, you'll see it now, every now and then. He just pulls it out of the bag. You fuck me. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't. Because do I, I don't make a rule for this. Because people on social media have, have seen it and they've flagged it up. But he always just does something. When there's a bit of rattle, you know, in the front row, because yeah. nobody knows what's going on in the front row, right? Especially props. They'll have a little rattle. He just does a little bit of niggle for someone, just a little bit. And it's so funny because you, yeah, you just watch it. Next time you see him scrummage, I won't ruin the full secret, but it's the best thing ever. <laughs> Not as subtle as a water bottle, little. No. You can't do that, you sir. Can't do that, can't so do that water sir. in my face, sir. Um, what I is like it? your career. Hi, yeah. That is literally Down the, the post. Post. That running into a post. Down the post. <laughs> my career's come to. What, um, what does Eddie Jones call you? Has he got a little nickname for you? I've got a few names. Yeah, I've got a fair few names. The Bristol Pistol. Nice. Yeah, it calls me Hugo Boss, because I always go <laughs> Hugo Boss. Um, what else? Gangster? Yeah. Ah, sometimes it's that gets thrown up. Yeah, That's it gets thrown up. It started early, didn't it? It was early, it was gangster, wasn't it? I think yeah. I was, bef I think that was, who got called that before me? Because I came in after Marlon he won, Yard, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, Yardy, yeah. and then he realised, Yardy ain't a gangster. Yeah, oh, yeah gangster, yeah. He, <laughs> well, neither am I, but I, I think I fitted the bill a bit more than, than Yard. So um, he, he was going to get your gold plate Mercedes and get rid of your <laughs> Oh no, that was when I done the chip and chase down the wing. <laughs> Mate, yeah. I made this line break and I had fucking a two on one. I think I had, it was either Danny in the backfield because he would have been in the boot or I had either Danny on my right or Rocco Laguni on my right. <laughs> and instead of fucking just passing it, I've chipped it, I've caught it to be fair and I've ran it in. He's blown the whistle and he's gone. <laughs> Genge, Genge. <laughs> If you want to fucking chip and chase, I'll order you a gold plate Mercedes and you can fuck off back <laughs> down to Bristol. And I was like, what have I done? <laughs> it's it's terrifying terrifying a bit goes. of flair. Yeah, you know yeah. it's terrifying when he goes as well. But nah, love... he's, uh, he's, he's a nice he, guy. He always talk, Haskell always talks about Eddie putting an arm around him. Dylan would say that he was given the cattle mm. prop more than more than the, the soft one. Does, does Eddie put an arm around you or does half he... Half half, yeah, oh, I think gives you a bit he's, of cattle prop. He's, he's a clever bloke. Um... I don't know if he watches this, so I won't give him too much, but I uh, know he's a, he's a clever bloke, but I've learned that the more open you are with him, the better the sort of response you're going to get. So as long as you're, as long as you're open with how you feel about him yeah. talking to you in a certain way, he's a, he's an understanding bloke. He's had a relatively tough past himself, so I've heard. Um, so he's, he's, he's an understanding bloke, but at the same time, yeah, he's a suck psychology, like in that sense, he's a very clever man. Mm. Are you, you quite know. interested in that side of it, given more so what now been I've, through I've and... tried I've tried a lot of sports sites I'm not heavily invested in it myself yeah. a lot of people are aren't they and it helps so many people and I think it's great I find it quite ironic that we're so into the physiological side of rugby and not so heavy into the mm. psychological part of it but myself I've never really had a good I remember with my mum sorry excuse me when I was 13 I had to go to this anger management thing. The school was like, we're not letting them back in the school. They've never expelled anyone, right? Yeah. They were as an academy because it changed from CTC to JCA. So the government gave them £9 million to change to an academy, John Cabot Academy, City Technology College to the academy. We've never expelled anyone as this school. I don't want this to be the first one. He's got a good rugby career ahead of him, we hope. Sent me to his anger management class with 
<laughs> with my mum. So she picked me up from school at about 12 o'clock. I've gone to Zang management thing in the middle of town. And I was like, mum, I really don't want to do this. You know, like she was like, no, you got to fucking do it. <laughs> you got to do it. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you yeah, 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 shut the fuck up. <laughs> Gave you the naughty left um, <laughs> So I've gone into this thing with my mum and there's this lady and I was like, all right, whatever, I'll give it a crack. So then she was like, all right, shut your eyes. I felt really uncomfortable in a room with my mum. At the time, I wasn't that comfortable around doing that sort mm. of stuff anyway. And this lady who I've never met before shut my eyes. So anyway, I was like, she was like, shut your eyes. I was like, shut my eyes. And I was like, you do it as well, because I don't want you to look at me. So everyone's got their eyes shut, right? This is genuine. Everyone's got their eyes shut. And she's like, right, take all your problems. This is on my life. Take all your problems. And I was like, all right, open the box. I was like, sweet, I've opened the box. Put them in the box. I was like, yeah. I open one eye and my mum's looking at me like, <laughs> yeah. so my mum's on board and I'm like, oh. I'm like, do you know what I mean? What is I'm, going on? Fuck this box. I got a box. <laughs> anyway, she's like, open the box, put your problems in the box. But we had to go to, otherwise, I wasn't letting go back to school. So I had to sit there for an hour, open your box, shut the box, bury the box in the sand. I was like, I'm on a beach, am I? She's like, yeah, yeah, you're on the beach. So it was like obviously like a real budget site that she sent me to, but that was my sp my first ever sort of interaction with a therapist. Yeah. And my mum was like, right, we'll go see a different one. And I went to a few and a few came into the school and I never really got on with it. So before I came into rugby, I was every time they were like, right, you need to see a sports psychologist. Cause you sort of carry that reputation around with you. Yeah. Going from schoolboy rugby, I went to Southwest and they were immediately like, oh, he's got a temper problem or whatever. Just because the way you are, if you're a bit boisterous or a bit yeah. different back in the day, especially in schoolboy rugby, that sort of perception of, just because you're a bit different, you know, or you were a bit from a different place or whatever it was. I carried it with me till I was about 18, 20, and they always made me see a sports psych, whatever team I was at. So that really sort of, it stopped me from being myself because I was like, fuck me, if I do this, they're probably going to send me away to a boarding school. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I didn't really like it. But yeah, my mum, I remember my mum's face. I love how she's mugging it off as well. You've got to do it, Ellis. So what the fuck is this? <laughs> we just, we bolted. But you know, the psychological thing is actually really interesting, uh, uh, you know, because of obviously you and I have had conversations about it and you were saying about, uh, well, before we talked about your application, how successful you've been and how I, I believe so much of part of, of my career was was helped by psychology, uh, using a psychologist or whatever, is actually you've got to find the right person. It is like shopping around. It's because when you build that rapport, then they're almost the first person you can come to. And, and, and do you know what the hardest thing is? I think a lot of people expect with psychology is that you've got to go there and cry. You've got to be there, open up. You've got to start talking all about your problems. And yeah, it's not, no, it's, like, all, no. it's, it's like for you, the best thing you could do is go, right, I'm coming for this particular reason, which is to make me the best performer on the field, is to be able to prepare in a uniform way, to be able to deal with ups and downs, injuries, uh, you know, like contracts, whatever you've been going through, get that. And then, do you know what, of a byproduct, one day you'll sit through and go, do you know what, actually, when some people speak to me in a certain way, I feel like this. And then you explore it. And before you know it, you've gone down those paths. Whereas when I first went and saw it, I didn't want to go and do it. Because I thought, oh, I don't want to go, I've got nothing to cry about. I'm yeah. fucking, you know, born with a silver spoon in and around my mouth, out of ass, <laughs> depending on where you went. And, 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 uh, <laughs> That's it, right, yeah, soft child. Yeah, 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 soft, soft, soft <laughs> Um uh, Do I really have to eat this cream tea, mother? <laughs> um, and, um, come on, mom, can I go and beat the chimney sweep up? <laughs> All right, governor. <laughs> no, I, um, I, you know, I would go and, I, I thought I had to go in and, and say stuff, like I was going to apologize, you know, like cry or say this, happened but it, nothing had happened but actually do you know what it was the sole reason that over years it started peeling about layers about confidence about self-confidence issues about you know you know i get angry like you know i don't, I don't really have that necessary demeanor but when i go i go, I go. Uh, and, it, and it's trying to learn how to do that when that's personal because you know sometimes I, you go out and you can't fight because now this this horror story is about anywhere, anywhere you're in the public eye you've got responsibility you're role model but more importantly you're a massive unit you fight someone you hurt someone, it's game over yeah. and, and, and there's no forget coming that, back from that you forget that quickly don't you like Mate. I remember when I was going out in Bristol when I was sort of 18, 17 you forget that you're in the academy you're in at 7 o'clock doing double weights every single day I just think getting head tight is, it, 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 you know, you say about your rugby, you're doing it, you talk to your friends. I think that's really poignant because a lot of friends and people can sometimes be selfish and say, look, you should come back. We want you back here. But the very fact they've said, actually, listen, stay where you are, have that, yeah, you know, yeah. have that life. You've got a very, we've got a very, when you're outside of rugby, outside of any job, you realise how lucky we are to do what we do. And it would be the stupidest, most bizarrest thing to go out and do that. And A, cost Give yourself something. Away, yeah, and, and there's yes. no point. And it's like, a, it's like a fake toughness thing. So you bang someone out. Okay, well. Well done, mate. Well yeah. done, that's it. It's, it is a four year. Or even worse, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Okay. You've never beaten anyone out, have you? Uh, I got hit on a train once. 
<laughs> did oh, you? Yeah. One of them, took it. Was it one the one of them, vi- <laughs> one of them viral <laughs> videos? Yeah. It was a Miss Marple thriller, and uh, <laughs> someone we cuffed dressed, me with, with a with you get happy slap? What? Do you get happy? You were a victim of happy uh, slap. It's the long time station. ago. It's the only time I've ever been hit. Okay. Well, we've all we've all had a rough life, mm. if you can see. Yeah, I, there are degrees to that, and I wouldn't pretend to. Um, yeah. Play amongst the big boys. Mean streets of Hampstead, or whatever it is. Where it is you? Yeah. Hampstead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, love that. You nailed that. I love that. Uh, you are watching and listening to House of Rugby together with Guinness with me, Alex Payne, alongside James Haskell, and the superstar that is the Leicester and England prop. As again, thank you. It's a real pleasure to have you on. Thank you for coming along. Still to come, we're going to go inside a bit more rugby. Uh, we've got a New Year's resolution perfect pour. We've got a bit of work to do on mm. that. Uh, but Liquid Football is back for 2020 and it is back with a bang. I remember coming through at Arsenal and uh, the first time I actually trained with the first team. There, was, there must have been an injury and then Pat Rice ran over or hobbled over <laughs> and then come and got me from the reserve team pitch and as I was running over he said right you're going to be training with the first team come on we were warmed up so as I got over there got what fr- was that like though being told well, that? that that run from that pitch to two pitches along but there was a big mound in between so you couldn't see it, it, well, it only lasted like <clears throat> a minute. It felt like it lasted like an hour. <laughs> honestly, uh, and you're just thinking straight away. There's so many thoughts going through your head. And this is obviously when they was in their heyday as well. And uh, I ran over and, uh, and Ricey gave me a bib and looked up and obviously he had like Vieira, Henri, Perez and Tony Adams was on my team. So Big Tone went, I've heard a lot about you, kid. He said, don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that is Liquid Football with the wonderful Kelly Cates and the team every Monday. Do uh, click into that and download it and uh, watch it wherever you download and watch your uh, your Joe content. Um, should we talk some rugby? When when did you realise that rugby was actually going to be a very good avenue um, to channel your potential? For- 14, 15 maybe. Because you were quite into the football before that, right? Yeah, well, I wasn't, basketball. I was never any good. Don't, right. I'm not one of them who's going to say I could have done football. Did you have trials with Bristol City? No, no, nah, nah, I was never. I, never. I, I, yeah. I genuinely, we had like a goalkeeping academy and I was in that, but then I got binned off as soon as they realised I was disparate. Like I had nosebleeds. Were you, were you in one of the football? I, I was when I was 13, yeah, but I think, I think it was one of them that you had to pay to go in. My dad I was, was like paying like 40 quid for me to go every month and... He, he's a big football fan, yeah. big Bristol Rovers supporter, and apparently this was the pathway into into the Bristol Rovers academy. Right. But I was I was never any good. Um, but then he took me down to the rugby on a Sunday. Um, I was big for my age, as everyone else was who played rugby, and yeah, it was all right. Hands like tits, but um, I was all right at carrying. So I hated tackling as well back in the day. Did you? It's pretty vile. I hated there. it. Yeah, I hated those kids who love tackling as well. I, I hated tackling. <laughs> I hated it. Honest to God, I hated it. Like my dad, so I told you, I think I've said this before in a podcast, like the day before my first day at Was, my dad like had a few drinks, shock, and he was um, sitting down, he goes, listen, and he talks about something. And I was like, oh God, what's happened now? Like, you know, you leave your mum. It's like, no, um, I know you don't like tackle. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, I know, you, I, know you, I know you don't like tackle. You never tackle around the legs. You always tackle up high. You never, you never go into it. You're kind of, you know, you're scared of it. Just admit, you know. And I said, I don't know what's happening. You're scared of it. You need to, you need to sort it out. And I was like, fuck off, Dad. What are you talking about? Like, obviously, like stormed. This is bullshit. Sat in my room, and after about an hour, I calmed down. I was like, do you know what? He's, he's right. I didn't like it. Didn't like the physical contact. Didn't like getting hit in the face. Just didn't, just didn't want anything to do with it. You never, I would never like tackle someone around the knees. Never done that. You know, it, if push comes to shove, like most people. When you went live, yeah. I'd go in hard, like do the old dump tackle. Well, not great technique, still go in and fly into people, but never, never preference. I've sort of had this, just, it was running at me. I'll be up, up high, all that kind of like attacking like a 10, you know. And I basically just went to, to Joe Worsley the first day of my session there. And he thought my name was Jonathan because he'd met my dad. So it took me three weeks to summon up the courage to tell him my name wasn't Jonathan. Um, <laughs> it was really awkward. Um, and I went to uh, I, I went to see him and, and I, I basically said, Joe, listen, uh, I need you to teach me to tackle. He's like, what do you mean? I said, look, can I do some extra tackling with you, please? And every day for, for six years after training or two, three times a week, we did 15 minutes of extra tackling. He taught me and it became the best part of my best part of my game. And it's a bit like the fighting it's like it, m- mentality wise like before my first uh, my first tra- training fight the other day first sort of full full bore thing you know night before i was like nervous didn't didn't really you know didn't really sleep because it's a very weird mentality to, to go into someone someone you train with you you know you, you know you don't really know that well put on gloves put on hair put on um you know do kickboxing sparring and takedowns and just go right touch gloves right try and 
chin in each other, chin you have it full have it like no like no there's no like feeling your way in it's full full good and it and it's really weird and you're How'd blowing you well it went right yeah i mean i was blowing like you wouldn't believe it was like th uh, two three minute rounds or sorry three two minute rounds and uh makes fitness like you've never seen like the first one i was probably like a five out of ten. Second one a seven third i was like an eight like that literally like you know so tired you want to get your head guard off want to take it's it was horrific but it's the same mentality i went through it did it and went you know what I actually quite enjoyed that. I quite enjoyed it. But it's the same thing with the tackling. It's interesting you to say this. How did you cure your, yeah, what was your, your thing? Switch. Eventually you've got to do it, haven't you? Um, I was in between centre and number eight. Um, and obviously if you miss one of them, you it's pretty obvious that you've yeah. missed it. I, was, I don't think I'm like the best technical tackler now, but if you put your head in, you usually do all right. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like around the rucks and that. So I'm probably... Probably gonna get exploited to fuck. Man. <laughs> All People going, you can't today. tackle. We heard him on House of Rugby. Is <laughs> with that well known? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. You sort of. My old man was quite harsh on me as well. If I didn't have a left hand pass, he used to literally after every game, be like, you got to learn to pass. Off. And I'd be like, fuck off! Like I don't want to pass off my left. And then actually, you sort of go to your room, you come back, and you're like, he's right. I need to. But I never had any rugby balls, so I had to wait until. Pissing down you used to headbutt people, knock their heads off, and pass them down the street. Yeah, and take the rugby ball for them. Uh, but no, yeah. It's... Was you, was your dad into rugby? No, or, or did not he really. become into it because of you? I think so. Like obviously, it's got a big drinking culture back in the day. And he used to play. What was it for Bishops? It's called Bish. I don't know. I think it's Bishop Bish. Stortford or that. They want Bishop Stortford. That's, right, fine. that's London, is it? I don't know. I just the only Bishops when I know. Bish Bishop's in, in Just Bristol. throwing it out it's there, place. giving Bushers thoughts to the shower. It's, it's, it's a place there. in Bristol. I think it was called Bishopston. But yeah, he was a second row slash flanker for Bish and he said that it was good good value like socially and he wanted me to get involved. I don't know, he enjoyed me see, seeing me do well, like with anything. Obviously he's he's quite a I'm his only boy, um, that he knows of. Um <laughs> Shag responsibly. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> Tell me well. Um so yeah, he, he was he's quite proud of me when I was doing all right with the rugby, and then obviously the like Bristol schools of rugby comes around, and yeah. then Southwest, and then I didn't make it into England 16s, and we were proper, oh, I was proper cut off by that. I was literally like, "Fuck it, I'm never going back again. I'm stopped playing. I ain't playing anymore." And I sort of really, really fell out of love with Cause it. Because that's really interesting. Because I a producer's eyes dropped down that quote that you gave about class in the game. When I was 16, 17, 18, I never made the age group teams. I made the 18s and I made the 17s, but... So when I was sick, I let men's size next. When I say I never made them, I was never that first face pick. You know, yeah. I was never a bolt on. You knew when you were going to camp who, who your bolt on was, you know, like... Yeah. And I had real good coaches at 18 and stuff. I had Peter Walton and, and John Fletcher, Ian Peel, good coaches, but it might have been a confidence thing myself yeah. um, that I never really felt that I belong there. And perhaps you, that's on my because you, you said it, my face didn't fit. I'm not white middle class. I'm working class. I don't want people to put it down to race. I don't think it's about that. I put it down to culture. Do you think the Do you think the game has changed in that regard? You know what we talk about it more and more now, a lot, like a lot more. Um, even at Leicester, um, I think it's slowly changing. I don't think the fans are changing that much. Yeah, I don't think you can. Like I used to take when I had the mentoring in Bristol. I used to take when I wasn't playing, I was never playing. I've never played in the champ really, 26 times in three years or something. Um, I'd take some of the boys who I was mentoring to the game, so they, they wouldn't enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? They want to watch football because the atmosphere is unbelievable. Well, it's also it's complexity, isn't it? That's the biggest thing. I went to my kind of first, like, I went to a few football matches, but my first kind of Arsenal match of the day. And, and uh, I, I, you know, obviously. Was that prawn sandwiches? Or were you in a yeah, no, no, well, no, 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 I wasn't. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, I saw the I saw the people, the public from a distance, but in, in a box. I didn't want to get too Thumbed much. Thumbed down, like an emperor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, not, yeah, exactly. I looked through a telescope, but I but but interesting. I think it's the complication as well with rugby. It holds it back. Is every time I meet everyone, they love the action, they see bits, but they can't. Nobody can comprehend what's going on. That's why I think Literally. this rugby X yeah. stuff. But it it, it, it it is bizarre, really, because I, I that school system thing put me off. So I got in, didn't get into England under sixteen. Not because my face didn't didn't fit. That's the best fucking school in the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I. Um, <laughs> Um, no, but I just didn't get in, and that like, cut me off. I never, I never wanted to do it. But I thought the whole process, actually, interesting enough, the whole process of the of the selections, the counties, almost put me off for life. You know that weird kind of thing when I wasn't used to kind of that competition. You know, you meet someone like someone like me. You meet someone like Ellis at a young age. He's he, he doesn't say anything. You're not saying anything. everyone. You buy into all sorts of talk. See, Ellis can bench you know 200 kilos. You know, so that bloke can run fast and that. And you you believe everything. Yeah. You know, you're staying in terrible terrible kind of accommodation. Horrible, horrible. Bit, like yeah. the work, like 
two star, one star hotels, 2000 degrees, like a fucking a bit of egg for breakfast, out training all day, playing, weird people, everyone's analysed you, loads of people in coats with roses on that you've yeah, never met. Yeah. It, honestly, the whole system was don't horrific. Don't get to keep the kit. Don't get to keep the kit, <laughs> take this back, don't do that, you're not good enough. Like, everyone go in that, it's like, it was like shit X Factor. Right, all the people I read out, you go in that room, everyone stays here, you've not been selected. And it, and it was, put me off for life. But it's only because, again, I had a similar situation where I was like, well, actually, do you know what? Stick two fingers up to them. I'm going to go and do the work and do what I wanted to do. And I started training. Did I then come back, uh, you know, a year and a half later and get into England under 18s? School side. Yeah. Um, but and, it did honestly and, put me and off. And Wales. And, and Wales in the 70s. Yeah, never did Ireland. Could have done Ireland, actually. Could have done Ireland. Um, so, because you, you, the, the, the quote goes on, it's stopping the game from progressing and it's painful. I mean, do you think... Do you think the game is it is not progressing at all or do you just no, think it's it's definitely progressing um it's a bit. I think the rules change way too often for anyone to keep up with the game or yeah. to to learn from a young sort of is it too complicated I'm not going to stand there and say the game I play is too complicated <laughs> yeah. because but to, but to engage sort of I think to engage that especially the people where I'm from I still honestly to this day get people ask me so like so what do you do as a job? And I'm like, no, 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 I play rugby. And they're like, yeah, but what do you do like for work? And I'm like, no, no, no I, I play rugby. Like that's how, that's how over, overlooked it is from yeah. where I'm from. Like people literally have no idea. But my friends sort of clued up on it now. They've come to a few England games and like they're running around with balls trying to get everyone to sign it and that. What, taking what pitch, do they like, make? Oh, yeah, Haskell, the legend Haskell. I'm like, no, he's not. He's a <laughs> but, um, if, they, if you ever spoke to my mates the way he spoke to me, they wouldn't be thinking that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like even when, what even do, when what my do friends, they make of it now? Like watching yeah, you in so that environment. To, literally, you know. the only words that come out of their mouth when they come watch me, they're like, "It's mad, it's mad." Can't believe you do it. It's mad. It's mad. And I'm like, it ain't that mental to me now. But yeah. actually, when I step back and look at it from their perspective, yeah, it's fucking crazy, isn't it? It is mad. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. You get, I, if you ran into someone in Tesco and tackled them, you get nicked. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. You get nicked. Okay. Well, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Start jacking the turkey that yeah, you're trying yeah. to buy. But it, but, it, but it is it is it is bizarre that kind of that mentality because I, I had that before you know so so, to, so what do you do what do you do for the rest of the week I said no I have to play rugby full time mm. and, and what I've said this before on this show is that the bizarrest thing for me was when you were in it it's everybody's world so all the inter politics stuff all the, the, the rugby journalists the media it, it, it's like all you can see is rugby Yeah. but then you go and say Ellis goes back with his friends or you step outside it you realise it's you know, second, third most popular sports, so, sports sport. Fourth, in fourth, in probably, England, yeah, is it? Uh, you know, so. it's so it's, it's like not even that popular. It's limited to certain things. I mean, I actually read Ellis's quote, and I never talked to him about it. When I read the quote, and he said that I've got more talented mates on scaffolding. That's than right. The people, yeah, mates quicker than Johnny May. I've, I've got a few mates who Johnny's actually asked. You know what Johnny's like? Yeah, what, yeah. Wanted to come to Bristol and race them. And I was like, John, <laughs> you're not really their type of match. You know what I mean? Like, John ain't really gonna gonna fit with no, them. Give but, away, um, bang them, bang them with a couple of sheets. They'd yeah, probably turn yeah, up. They'll probably race. come to Leicester. <laughs> yes, yeah. I thought. Um, we'll, we'll get it done. But uh, I, so I read the quote and at the time, and I never spoke to him about it. And I would, and I'm not ambushing now. I, I thought actually, do you know what? I thought that is true to an extent because of the school system. But mm. I actually thought with, with, with rugby, because you've got so many local rugby clubs now, the opportunity for people to go and have a go at it and try is actually, I think, is more prevalent than anyone. And I think rugby clubs are a lot more... Uh, your local rugby clubs are a lot more less classist. You know, the public school system is that. Yeah. State schools don't play it, so you're immediately cutting out a load of people. Uh, the general members of public, it's actually not that popular. It's not even anywhere near football. Like, it's, not, it's incomparable, yeah. right? And then you get something, you get the rugby clubs. I think there are the opportunities, but actually, you said people don't have the awareness of it. They don't even know about it. So I, I, I did agree with him to a certain extent. There are probably lots of people who get overlooked because they don't, their faces don't fit necessarily at the schools. But actually, if you had a talent or could do it, like you say, you, you took your dad took you down to football on a Saturday, and then took you to mini rugby on a Sunday. Yeah. I think it's a great thing to give the kids an opportunity to see, even if it's tag or touch or whatever, to to expand the to expand the game that way. Yeah, Hass, I completely agree with you. But what I say to you now is, if I screw up that piece of paper there and put it on the floor, I could play football. Yeah, can can I could play football? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Albeit we've got a rugby ball there, yeah. but it's not that easy. You, you can't do rugby like that. Agreed, you can't yeah. if you've got a football, that old shitty football that never had any rubber or whatever around it because everyone had that football in school yeah, yeah. you probably had a decent one but yeah. like <laughs> I had a little you, bloke who hold a football yeah, came, I had get, a bloke that came with a football <laughs> <laughs> I want that football over there daddy um, but no you can play football wherever you want you can't play rugby wherever you Agreed. want you, and you can't go home and, and practice your like you practice free kicks or whatever when I was younger I remember oh Gerard you know what I mean you run up yeah. and bang the ball yeah. I ain't r running up and shouting uh, Johnny Wilkinson yeah. 
Will Carl, you, know, like you don't do that. But if you were to drop goal on training, you do for the yeah, crap. Especially, but... with, especially with me, I didn't have any friends, so I used to pass the ball and go, Wilco! And the ball would hit the ball when I had to run <laughs> around and get it. You missed the ball when you stand yeah. yeah. But that's what I'm saying is I've got, I see people, who, who, they'd be good at rugby. And I remember this one boy was going to Old Reds and he was going to train. And when I was there, like I'd say, yeah, like I'll come down and speak to him, say hello to him, like do a session. Yeah. But then as soon as I'd left, he'd be like, I'm fucking going rugby. Yeah. Like, I can't practice it. But he's in school playing football. He's playing for Brisbane's under 15s or whatever football because he can do football in school yeah, with his yeah, mates. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Everyone likes hey, football. We did it in the jungle. You know I mean? Ian Wright scrunched up That's a paper saying. bag. And, and you we would have played football. Yeah. yeah. But that, that is the he hard He didn't find to play rugby, did he? Do you know what? He always actually, do you know what he said? He said the one thing he always wanted to try was doing that. He wanted me oh, to teach really? him to tackle him. That's why I tried to teach him to tackle. And oh, while I wasn't looking, Kate, Kate Carraway Kate Carraway tried to tackle me. And I was holding a bag and she ran into it. I didn't see, I was just talking to someone, I ran into it, fell straight over. No, Kate and Jenna's come back around the corner going, what are you doing? <laughs> right? She's punched me in the arm, like joking, like partly joking. Really the that. photo is there. Kate Carraway's on her back. Everyone's shocked. And there's me like leering over. Bully. <laughs> is, that, is that how that no, came No, about? Sadly, oh, no, right. sadly. That was something else. But <laughs> what, what was that again? That, that, oh, was, that, was, that was snapped the old, at the dingo yeah, dollar, didn't they? Dingo dollar. And they couldn't vote four times in a row. Things I didn't hear, I think I'd hear on this Yeah, show. exactly. Snapped in the dingo but dollar I do think. I do think, do you know what, the, the rugby X thing actually with, with, with Ben Ryan and the fact, the popularity of that, I think that goes to some way of breaking down some of the barriers and making it more accessible. It's never, ever, ever, ever going to be able to compete with rugby. But I do think actually... You know, Alison said say the game's complicated. If when you're playing rugby, rugby's not complicated. No. But for someone to watch it, mm. the, you know, every time you beat people, they love it because they love it. The, and I think I could never understand, as as a rugby player, how you could watch a football game nil nil, one nil, and just you know, I like the skills, I love the fact they had a mega cash, I love the goals, but I didn't like anything else about it. But rugby, I was like, there's always getting someone smashed. Someone's always getting banged. Someone's always doing this. Someone's always scrapping, scrapping or whatever. Yeah. But but then if you watch the game and you set the ball goes into ruck, disappears, and suddenly there's a penalty and there's all the referees giving all Five these signals, scrums and yeah, yeah, nobody can understand it. And I think that's what really holds it back from being really engaging. It's but, a game for purists, isn't it? It's yeah. not a game for like a, a forthcoming generation no. of no. I, I don't know. How, I don't know how you do that. Neither do I. I but that's what football's so good for and any, anyone can play football you see people in the favelas and wherever in all these places and they, they're playing football yeah they ain't playing rugby but it's it's good to see how much people are trying i think there are a few are, are trying really hard to sort of push that but i ain't got the answer for it and if they're doing they're trying at least to, yeah. to break down those barriers and i'm, I'm happy to to support whatever they got again um one other thing you said um which was really interesting is about loyalty it's bollocks. It's complete bollocks. Was the quote? <laughs> yeah, because agree. you agree. Yeah, uh, it's it's tough to explain if you're not if you've never. I don't want to sound like an asshole here. If you've mm -hmm. never sort of had to be in a rugby environment, a lot of my friends who've retired, one of them sat next to me. As soon as you sort of, how long were you at Wasps? Uh, in total, twelve years, on and off. And how well they look after you now? They don't speak to me anymore. But that's my point. I, I feel as though if you're working for somewhere for 12 years and you give everything you gave to a club, surely there's some sort of, they'll give you something back. Obviously they paid you mm. very well for those. Only the last few years. Yeah, very, and they shouldn't even play because that was when you were your worst. No, uh, actually that was actually one of my best actually. <laughs> it's Northampton I feel sorry for. I tried, you know, I tried my best and then you got five games out of me. They're, they're really nice to me. Northampton are unbelievable. Like, can't get them off the phone. Moral of the story, play shit, earn loads of cash. <laughs> yeah, and nice I didn't, I mean, I was, on, I, was, that was on, I was on the same cash at Northampton I was on when I was 21. Well, so says you wouldn't, wait, paid a lot when he was you've got the, No, no, you've got the same amount of cash in your little glove compartment in your motor. In than, my bag. Yeah, in your bag. But no, but that is the Lord of things. Well, Karen, sorry. Yeah, that, that's why, because it pains me when people see articles about, I don't know, a good example would be when Johnny left Gloucester, he found that clause in his contract that he manipulated to, to leave Gloucester and everyone was like, we looked after him, and then his academy is here and it's like, fuck off. If you, if it's a work environment, if you want to leave Tesco and go to Asda, I'm sure your manager ain't screaming, you can't fucking do that. That's not direct competitive. They're two roads up. Yeah. No, they ain't going to say that, are they? Like, do you know, no one's got a problem with that. And you sort of forget that sport now, especially rugby, even more so because the money's gone up. It's a business. And you see about all the, the salary cap stuff. It is a business. If people ain't got room for you in their cap, I'm sure I won't dive into the salary thing because I've got no idea about it. But if they ain't got money for someone, they're going to get rid of them. Yeah. No matter if they've been there eight years or, or nine, they're going to get rid of them. Yeah, Sanjay's gone back stay. to Wales, hasn't he? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And he was their best thing since last bread. He's unreal, don't mm. get me wrong. But they, that, he was their answer. Mm. 
And now you have to find a different answer. And that's fine for clubs to do that. But when a player does it, it's, there's uproar. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying is bollocks. I'm not saying there's no loyalty left in rugby. That's that Maybe I said it, but that's not what I mean. What I'm saying yeah. is it's bollocks to think that just because you've been somewhere for 10 years that you're going to get very well looked after. To be fair to Leicester, I do think they do look after players very well post finishing if you've been there for a long time. Yeah. And at the same time, there are people in the game that absolutely milk it, as you're probably aware of, and don't give anything to a club. And I do think that should be pushed out as well. But you've got to have a balance. You can't expect an arm and a leg from a player yeah. and then give them fuck all when they retire. Yeah. But in rugby, it is an arm and a leg. Quite literally. And that's what I say to people when I've got fans peppering me when we were losing at Leicester. We won last week, but we have been losing lately. So obviously, I've literally got fans saying that we don't care. And I'm like, what the fuck are you on about? Mm. I got up at seven o'clock for seven months, whatever it was, to go in and do rehab, wait three hours to do weights. So all the boys who were playing come and do weights. You're sat there, you're twiddling your thumbs, you're, you're losing your mind. Everything you give psychologically and all the body parts that go missing, do you know what I mean? Everyone seems to forget that as soon as you finish playing. It's like, oh, he jumped ship when times were... You've got to look after yourself. Yeah. And that's how it's, it's instinct, isn't it? If things ain't going well for you, you're going, to, you're going to fucking look after yourself. As the club would. And people, rugby players ain't going to ever. You can obviously hold a grudge against someone if they fuck you over royally. But at the same time, I don't think clubs are losing sleep when they get rid of someone who's not paid as well as their marquee. Yeah. But if there's so many players that slip through the net over the years that don't get looked after well post rugby. I'm not saying the RPA do a terrible job of that. I'm, I don't know too much about that again. I'm not saying they do a terrible job, but in our sport, just because it's jumped so much now in, term, in terms of popularity mm. compared to where it was, mm. yeah. it gets highlighted a little bit more. But no, you can imagine how I many rugby players go f- slip through the net. They're absolutely fucked. And, like, they've got nothing, no cash, whatever. But they've gave all these years to sport and they didn't have the chance to study. And you can say, well, they should have studied. Mm. Should have stu- But they're trying to be the best rugby player they can be. So they're putting all their eggs into one basket. You're physically exhausted. You ain't got time. I don't want to go and study myself. I'm going to mm. try and do it. Hopefully I'll do all right. But at the same time, if that starts conflicting with my rugby, I'm going to count it off because mm. mm. I want to make the most out of rugby career. Do you know what I mean? And if you're not getting paid all that cash that some people do. Mm, some people do. <laughs> if you're not getting paid all that cash, then people are fucked over at the end of it. And that's mm. why I say loyalty is a facade in sport in general. I'm sure yeah. it's the same with football, cricket. Any I, team sport. I, I, th- I, do you know what? I, I completely agree. And I'll t- I tell you why. Because I think, firstly, um, it, it is a business. I think what you have to remember is that fans are fans for a reason. And, and that, that there isn't necessarily a lot of rationality when it comes to supporting a team. I, I've said that before. People live and breathe it. They have their Monday to Friday jobs. They don't, they're not massively, maybe not that keen on it. And they live for those weekends. They live for those moments. And people can't, you know, they want their team to win. Everyone thinks their team should win every weekend. What people forget is is that it's the two sided thing of it is that that you know they want players to stay loyal and mm. and players you know w- want to do that you know I would I would have loved to have stayed my whole career through through you know one club and done what someone like Lawrence did and everything else. The big difference between me and Lawrence when contract negotiation came, they were trying to sign him two two or three years in advance, and it was an open checkbook within reason. With me, it was down to the last six months of every single contract. It was always a pay cut. It was always this. We've always got to leave. We've always got to do that. Now because we've got to give X this. Yeah, we've got to do that, that, and you're not this or whatever. And it just would go on and on every contract. And I never, I never. That's why I never got a place. Never ended up buying a house for years because I could never knew where I was going to be. It was always like a one year, one plus one, or a two. I never. That's why I like envious of Saracens. Obviously, you know. <laughs> They might have bent the rules a bit, but the very fact that they that they would sign people up early, they kept that unity. And I think that what fans forget is that when we put our bodies on the line, yes, there are players in any sport who are there, they're journeymen, they're happy to be there, they don't want to push it. But someone like Ellis to say about loyalty and about not, not caring, you know, we put your body on the line. It's, it becomes very apparent when people don't care. Mm. But sometimes if you're on a losing streak or you're unable to perform there aren't any miracle answers because if there are miracle answers You'd we would fucking do it yeah. and we would be winning and I think people I think people and fans forget that I think sometimes in football interesting enough just talking to my friends and talking to some other people about it you do have that slightly more mercenary approach where you can see people are paid such a large amount of money remember that we get paid good money never to be never to be looked at but in comparison it's still money that you have to keep working yeah. it's still money you have to save it's still money that you know might you know there's still good it's not going to be uh, unless it's certain players a massive cushion you've got to keep grafting you've got to do some work outside of rugby and then when that, that door closes you're going to have to work your ass off and your body's fucked and your body's fucked your neck's fucked everything's gone but with football you're earning such a, a level that actually if you want to not care and not want to do 
do that. It's actually quite easy to do that. Yeah. And I think people confuse that and, and people get so upset with loyalty in that sport. But in rugby, you're there for a year, two years. It's such an attritional sport. Your loyalty comes and the, the teams that are successful breed that loyalty by paying people good money, by signing people up early and encouraging them. If you make everything a battle, you're not going to breed that loyalty. Like I would always, have, as I said, want to stay at Wasp. You know, but I, they don't talk to me anymore. Like Di Young's very lovely. He texts me occasionally. Um... And you know, you I speak to them. Who, who are you talking about? Who well, don't, don't talk to anyone. I've not done here for anyone. I've not have never been invited to a game. Never invited back. Never been asked to do anything. Nothing. Like, I find that extraordinary. Nothing. I've not. I've not. Apart from Die Young me messaging me a couple of nice messages, like he's always done through my career. I haven't heard from anyone. And, and Kevin Harm actually, not manager. I speak to players. Nothing. No, I'm not one. One. one Which is no, no, owners you know, boards. No, no, no one cares. No, I've not literally. I, I, if I never picked up the phone again, I never spoke. I would never, what, never, what, I would never have anything to do with them again. Never. Not, not because I don't want to, because I just never had anything. Northampton, who I was there for a year, who, uh, who, uh, you know, I, I tried my very best with. I, I lovely. They're supportive. They invite me back to come and do one of their games. I speak to the coach, you know, uh, Phil Dowson, actually did a heart there. I speak to the boys, you know, I, I feel. I feel more involved in that, and I was only there for a year. But they, but they, it's just, it's what fans see is one side of it, and they forget that it's a living, and they forget it's a business, and they forget that if you got injured or they got any insight that you weren't good enough, you would be gone. Mm. So where's the reverse loyalty? Well, as players, you don't expect the reverse loyalty because I've seen players gone into this thinking that they're going to have loyalty and have been absolutely shafted and right. stood there with a dick in their hand, going, "But I don't understand. I've done everything for you. I did this," and the club are like, "Yeah, I'm really sorry, but well, we can't afford yeah. to do the medical." We can't rehab you. You're out of contract. Um, you know, if you just want to pack your bags and fuck off, would be would be nice. And, and by the way, leave the kit because someone else can have your squad number. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's what it's like. It's, it's, it's so, how it goes. So I think I think what what fans and what I should do is is never ever in hard moments in club times ever never listen to what fans say in that respect. Respect them because you, you wouldn't have a game. We wouldn't enjoy it if we didn't have them. But when it comes to contract negotiation or downtimes, you have to be focused. You have to know what's right for you. Yeah. And I thought what was interesting was really Johnny May's comments in the media today about yeah. you know him saying that he's prepared to leave. I think that's I think that's really ballsy. I think it's really honest. I think it's good. I think clubs have often think they, they own players and that, that, that no one's ever going to leave. There's no business element to it. And when there is a business element, you know you know they're negotiating the hell out of you. So you play a bit of hardball with them. Everyone's like, Oh, doesn't want to be here. Doesn't want to be here. It's like no, no. I do want to be here, but you know, sharpen your pencil. You know, let's 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 see where we're going to be. In. Yeah. Be begin. So I, I think he's absolutely right. I think it's important that once you agree or you don't agree, the loyalty kicks in 100. percent And what and actually in rugby, the reason why loyalty, I don't think for most clubs we question is we don't. We've almost got a no dickheads policy. I know that's taken from the All Blacks situation, but we don't. Club rugby. If you were not turning turning away, you know, boys would be into you. You, you know the coach is being to you. Yeah, there's, there's self police. There's no hiding. You would never get a team like in maybe potentially in football where six or seven players are, are giving it. You would never get me in a situation where I walk into the crowd, give the crowd a finger, take my shirt off, throw it on the floor, and walk into the changing room. You wouldn't get that because he'd fucking pick the shirt up, hit me in the back, and go, Has, put the fucking shirt. Up, what are you doing? Yeah. I'll be reprimanded by the team manager. I'll be fined. Boys are just thinking you're a prick. Yeah, and you just you don't want that. So I think that there, there is. I think he's exactly right. I just think the loyalty situation just has to be understood, and I think contract negotiation is never easy, but it is straight business mm. and I love it when the fans get upset you know when they say this is my favorite line when you're not winning as a team they come in and go you know I pay your wages I don't expect to to have to do this I'm like listen love your 25 pound 50 pound 6 pound ticket ain't going to touch the sides of, of, a, of, a, of an international squad now if we didn't have sponsors if you went just on on stadium TV fees money. tv money yeah word, yeah right? yeah if you went on, if you didn't have the tv money you didn't have the sponsorship there'd be no premiership at what when we were at was at Adams Park of every pound spent we got 15p of it and the fans are like, it's like, no, no, guys, we had to move to Coventry because we got 15p per game. And we used to get, of a 10,000 seat estate, 2,500, 3,000. It's like, it ain't going to touch the sides. Would have even filled up Lawrence's Range Rover <laughs> on that level of cash. Do you know what I mean? So it's just, I think people have to be really a bit, a bit more, a it's, bit more reticent quite, and relaxed about again, it. Again, I understand the frustrations from fans and people who aren't in the, in the sporting industry because they obviously see it as you got the best job in the, in the mm. world. But then when it becomes work for you yeah. and it's not, necessarily that child it is a childhood dream of course but I always say never meet your heroes you know what I mean all, all that sort of stuff lucky for you though we got on well didn't they <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, do knock him out please feel free to knock him out <laughs> but like you, you, it becomes the, the reality sort of kicks in and you're like fuck me if if it all did end tomorrow again touch wood who's, who's there to sort of pick up the pieces your family yeah. your friends people who are there from a young age but how hard is it as well for boys who were at WASP like for example I won't name names, but boys who had to move from London, all their mates, mm, so they're mm. all the family there, to Coventry, 
they've got none of their family up there. So they probably lose some friends because they don't really chat to them anymore. How many friends that I don't know from when I was younger that I would have loved to have kept in touch with? I've got mates who have had kids and I'll come back and they've got kids. I'm like, fucking, I spent my childhood with this bloke. I used to chat every day and now because I'm in Leicester, I don't ever see him. But that's just how it is. Mm. And you give up so much. And I'm, I'm aware everyone makes sacrifices for work and we get paid very well in comparison to... Mm. Agreed, yeah. The majority were in a... I'm not moaning. It's not me moaning. What I'm saying is... A bit more understanding. It's don't don't fucking forget it? what you're doing. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Don't forget you're putting your life on the line. You are, it's mm. fact. If you go out and play a game of rugby, it's that well, physical. Look at the, 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 I was, the was going to say, like, Michael Fatia yeah. yeah. I don't know him personally. I've heard he's a top bloke from, from what people have yeah. said. And look what's happened to the bloke overnight. Yeah. Like, no words anyone can say is going to... Fix that. It's not, mate. It's, it's savage as that sounds. It doesn't, does it? No. Everyone can send their condolences. Brilliant. But it ain't going to fix that. doesn't fix his And look how much he's gave to the game... I'm sorry, but people will forget about it. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, he gets all the support he needs. But someone like Matt Hampson, you know, you, you just works to Leicester, brilliant. But there's, but there's been, you know, there's been, I don't know, I, don't, I mean, I've, I've seen five or six or heard about five or six other Matt Hampson mm. similar cases. Well, let's talk about concussion. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? How many people retire from concussion? You don't really hear about oh, it no. because it's swept under the carpet because we don't know anything about it. No. No one knows anything about it, really, do they? The no. NFL was still asked questions about it. They change technology every year, change the HIA every year. They ask you to say six different fucking words you can't remember every year. <laughs> Apple, saddle, bubble. Carpet, uh, bubble, <laughs> elbow. Fuck me, I, don't, I can't even say it myself when I'm normal, do you know what I mean? But it's so scary and the reality is, you, yeah, you get paid decent wedge for it and you're this academy boy, you're coming through and you're fucking tussling training. Brilliant. But if that all ends... You haven't fucking put enough eggs into your education. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You've put all your fucking eggs into one basket because you want to make mum and dad proud or you want to make your friends proud. But you forgot about everything else. You're out of touch with reality. You're in training slapping ass on dick every day. Like, that's how it is. Yeah. That, that's rugby. I bought him dinner. Do you... Do you <laughs> Jay, this, this is fascinating for a guy who, you know, is not, not soon going to be 25. Do you, do you... At what point does it switch from I'm living the dream to... Shit, this is a little bit actually. The reality isn't quite what the dream. It's like promises. I said, when you go back home and you sort of chat to your mates and that, and you think, fucking hell, like, I, I could be sat here doing a doing a normal job, and you go back into work and you're like, fuck me, I'd, I'd rather go back home and do a normal job. So you got to find that balance, and that's where the psychologist mm. side of thing comes in. I think team psychology is brilliant mm. for that, and if you need to see one on your own, albeit not for me, but I've never, I'm too young to understand. I've been in the game long enough, and hopefully, I do. I have some answers for younger boys and stuff. Mm. I try to pass on the little wisdom that I've got. But I like to hear from boys who have been about blocking that. But I've got friends, and I'm only 24, remember, I've got three friends that I can name off top of my head, I won't for whatever reason, that got shafted after rugby. And I'm 24, do you know what I mean? And mm. they got properly fucked. What are they doing now? One of them's doing very well for himself. Two of them are doing very well for themselves, to be fair. But these were, one of them was Ednock. And if he wasn't as bright as what he was, then, and wasn't made to go into education, then he'd be, he'd be fucked himself. Mm. And I'm very happy that, not happy, but it's quite good that rugby's from quite an upper class background mm. because people can financially support their families. But for someone like me, and I ain't getting my fucking violin out, if I was fucked, my family wouldn't be able to support me. I wouldn't expect my mum to come around wiping my ass because they wouldn't be able to. And luckily, Hamburg's doing a great thing mm. for people who do get hurt in rugby and class, I'm real. But not everyone's going to get that. And there are going to be some people slip through the net. And mm. that's where the loyalty thing comes in for me. Like, we people don't get looked after well enough for a sport that you give so much to. You receive, I think, very little in terms of even the insurance policies and stuff. Like, they don't they don't want to pay out No, to that's, you. that's the bizarre thing. But you well. sign your life away to it. You're like, fucking right, I'll pay... It's quite a big chunk People of money. People forget for that wages. as well, yeah. That's people... what I'm saying. You, you're trying to help yourself out for after rugby and you're trying to make yourself the best player. You ain't performing on the weekend. Well, that's maybe it's because you're fucking piping on at me every day that I've got no loyalty to the club. Yeah, and, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? And people forget all these factors. I could sit here all night and talk about it. But like I said, I'm 24 and I've seen three of my good mates retire mm. and it's upsetting for me. Luckily, I'm doing all right. But that can happen to me at any time. Mm. But I, I think I think actually RPA, to be fair, about the restart stuff, I think they're doing a good job on that respect. I think they're trying to encourage. People th are trying. Yeah, people, yeah, are, trying, people yeah. are trying. I'm not saying no, no, not. I, I, people I, are trying. I think they're doing well. I think really interesting with the with the, the motivation stuff. I think if you're privileged enough to play with England and work with Eddie, I think he speaks brilliantly about um, you know, the opportunity we've got, how lucky it is to be involved, how, how 
you know, he wants a room full of people who are prepared to sacrifice, prepared to go there. Understand that, you know, if you go to win a World Cup, you put yourself on a pedestal, you go and play for England, you work, do the sacrifice, work, put your body in line, the benefits will, will, will come, even if it is as simple as, you know, once you retire, unfortunately, a World Cup medal, winner's medal, you know, it may pay you for dinners for 20 years, but mm. a premiership medal ain't going to do anything apart from hanging on your wall, potentially. So it's, it's interesting, but he, I think he's incredibly motivating uh, at that point. I think... As well with, with the body on the line thing. I think that is the one thing we, we you do take for granted more mm. than anything else is that actually you you are compromising yourself into to such a way that physically it's very difficult to you know you you're, to get out of rugby unscathed and not to have a you're few doing problems. You're well. doing really well, and I think that. You know, I just think all of that needs to go and be put into context when it comes to the business side of it. And to remember that, you know, with insurance, insurance companies, um, you know, I, I, not slandering it, I'm, a, you know, I'm, I'm telling you from, from some experience that I know of, but they don't want to pay because, you know, for example, anything with a pre existing thing. So if you say a rugby player, pre existing injury, mm. they're not going to pay for. So if you ever get something scanned or checked up or you have a problem, say, you know, a problem with my toe, I could never retire for my toe, even though I retired because of my toe, and no, got no payout, got nothing, no support. I literally, one day I was in. Saints, then I finished with no with no money. I got paid, paid the last bit of my salary, we know, but that was it. No payout, no insurance. No insurance payout at oh, all. Absolutely nothing. So when I finished, I got nothing. I literally went in, I went in, essentially, when I said my dick amount, I walked out, and that was it, nothing. Done. And, done. And that was it. And, and you know what? I couldn't get, I couldn't claim on insurance the last year because I was over 30, I was 33, the premium was so low, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't include my toe. So the point is, I would have had to retire for something else. And bar calling up Ellis, who would love to have done it, put my arm between two chairs, like out of that movie with the football, with the World Cup, you um, know, Stallone and. Um, absolutely brilliant. Escape to victory. Escape to victory. Yeah. Yeah. If he smoked my Pele. arm, yeah, Pele smoked my arm, I could have claimed on that. But nothing else I could have claimed on. I, you know, I could have, I could have made up all oh, the concussion there. I could have, but even then, they don't want to pay on they that. Don't pay on they don't want to pay on concussion, which I think's bizarre. But, but it's because you're, ger we are gerbils. We're a generation of gerbils because the game hasn't been professional for that long. So no one's got the studies to say rugby. That is the reason. Yeah. In rugby, that you had to retire. So people, they don't want to pay on concussion, and that's probably the biggest one that gets you yeah. every year. Like yeah. boys retiring from concussion. It's just mental. Like it's a collision sport. It's going to happen. Yeah. And, there's, and we, we know it. We, we actively agree to it. Like, still go out and do it. Yeah, so, yeah. But it's, you've, got, you've got to have the... You've got, a, I think people have to have awareness that you are putting your body on, uh, on the line, that it can finish tomorrow. And both Ellis and I have been lucky enough to play for England. Both got stuff enough enough stuff about us to, 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 to carry on and be all right, within mm. reason, touch wood. But the... But the you know, other people who don't even get that, who sort of get come out of the academy, get a couple of games the first team, play in the LV, do a couple of bits and pieces, then suddenly someone falls in, they've got a concussion, neck, they're gone. You know, and then and they're never seen it. They don't get a payout because they maybe couldn't afford the insurance. I think the the RPA now are great at kind of making sure that players know that you can get the different types of insurance. You can mm. do this kind of stuff. But again, it's money out of salary. You know, there's a big disparity between you know the, the top dogs. Rugby players are getting paid more, which is great, but the bottom are still because you've got to fit it into a salary cap. Well, look at the championship. You know, and so even worse. Terrifying. Well, look, yeah, and I, I just think it, it, it's really kind of interesting that whole that whole process, um, and it, 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 it's it, it's quite scary uh, to, to, to be completely honest with you, because you just don't, you know, a lot of people just don't know what what to do afterwards and don't get paid out, and then you then you have to hear someone go, "You're not being loyal." Well, they offered me, you know, they offered me a pay cut, and I'm playing the best rugby in my life. Fucking no wonder I didn't say please, thank you very much. You know, are you sad about the situation at Wasps? <sighs> Or is it just what it is? I think, um, you know, I learned early on about the, the business element of it. That was the, I, I learned, uh, yeah, I, I pretty much came across it early on in my career when um, it was actually Warren Gatlin, interesting enough, is that I, my agent at the time was a guy, a guy called Jamie Salmon, was quite funny. And mm. I wasn't used to like the psychological thing. I was only quite young and they would renegotiate my contract from like another academy contract. And I think because the club had me doing like appearances and bits and pieces, I was driving on my Vauxhall Astra and I think Jamie off asked him to do some expensive for mileage. And Warren Gatlin called me in and was like, your fucking agent wants this for fuck, you know, he wants 40 p a mile. You can fuck off. If you don't want to be in this club, you can fuck off. And I was like this. Mr. Gatlin, sir. I was like on the phone to my dad. I was like, Dad, tell Jamie. Like, it was, tell him, sign, I'll sign, I'm sorry. And he was like, relax, son, relax. This is business. This is all about this. This is this. And he always explained it to me. You know, so when I saw the process, and when I when I left first time for, to, to, to Wasp, I saw the process of it, you know, playing hardball, those awkward conversations that people have. Like, I love it when people represent themselves. Like, you get players who represent themselves. Like, Tim Payne used to represent himself. I love it. Because you know what pain is like. It's such a boy. But, like, you know, fuck off. I want pain this. Like, like we don't want to pay that. I'm fucking leaving then. Yeah, 
I'm, you know, I'm I would so, struggle. Yeah, yeah. Do you do your own I, stuff? I do a lot of my stuff. And when it comes to contract times, I go in my agent. I'll do the. I'll tell him what I want. I'll do all the talking. He does all the legalities of it. He sorts that. He's I looked after. That. He's looked after me very well. Yeah. From when I was very young and I was earning fuck all. So but I've got a good relationship with him. Top bloke. But I love that you go to this asshole. But <laughs> um, if I go into a, if it's do you my, use your special technique at scrum time? If you're not, <laughs> well, you're not getting the extra zero. I remember, I remember I got tapped up by him, and he was like, "Listen, when we go in, I won't say who it was, but they'll stare you out, and there'll be a long awkward silence, and they'll stare you out, and whoever cracks first is going to get the highest, <laughs> going to get the highest figure." So we've got, <laughs> we've gone in there, we've sat down, me and him, we're opposite this bloke. I'm just sat there staring at him. <laughs> I swear on my life. Well, no one pulled the no trigger. No one pulled the trigger for about two or three minutes. Then my agent burst out laughing and we eventually sorted something. But it is business. That's how far it goes. I love that you do that though. I've got so much respect because I couldn't do that. I couldn't look him in the eye. I was only time a couple of times with, with, with Wasp actually when I was like faffing around, when it was like faffing around and I walked in and I just said, listen, I'm not being funny. Can we just cut all this crap out about this? You, you know, I want this. This is what I'll do. I'll sign tomorrow if you get me this. Do this. And I had to give up. You know, they wouldn't, still wouldn't give I had to give up some bonus thing to get this, just to, to get it over the line. And that was the only time I've done it because, I, you know, go through agents. And you know what? thing with what young players and people forget when it comes to agents is you go to your agent, right, I want this. They go off there, they come back to you. And obviously, there's a lot of kids out there who don't, who don't understand earning their spurs. There's like perception, you know, because money is better. You forget that it, it, that sometimes it's accumulative, but you do have your market value. Yeah. But, but interesting, you go in there and you say to your agent, right, they come back with an offer. You go, right, you go in there, you tell him, we're not fucking signing for this, we're doing that. You know your agent's not going to go in there and do any of the sort because long after you've been retired, he's still got to deal with them. Yeah, so they ain't gonna ever, ever, exactly. ever unless they're looking after Maru Otoji and Owen Farrell or something <laughs> like that, where they they can live off that bit of cash. In that specific, they ain't going and kicking doors down. Yeah, be like, yeah, don't worry, James. Yeah, I'll go in there. Um, excuse me, do we have a little bit? He's, being a he's, been a dickhead. <laughs> he's asking for all these things. But I tell you one thing, just on the, the medical thing, it was really funny because we were talking about it off air. So, in light of that medical care situation, uh, um, you know, talk about the insurance. One uh, medical guy in uh, England, years and years and years and years ago, decided to pre an England camp, bring in an MRI truck. So, hired this MRI truck where he was going to scan necks and backs, everyone. And all the senior players at the time, I think like Lawrence, Joe, um, I think David Barnes is the RPA rep there. So, it was back in the day. Well, like, no, you're, you're not doing this. And I was like, what do you mean? We just want to make sure you're healthy. Went, no, no, no. You can't scan rugby players' backs and necks, have on data, because as I told you, anything that's scanned yeah. will be shown as pre-existing, so the insurance wouldn't pay. Everyone will lose their insurance policies. And what happens if you find what should call its necks hanging off? I mean, if you scan his neck, scan my neck, it'd be terrible. It'll be bulging discs, there's bits and pieces all over the place. You scan it, and uh, you can't oh, do it. Your fence. Oh, the RPA, two minutes later, Damien Hopley, whoop, that, that lorry was beep, 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 <laughs> reversed straight out of twigging him. The guy just had like one tear running down his face, the doctor. Because <laughs> obviously those lads had just chewed him off. I'm like, you are completely insane. Not one person's going through. That was, that was good player power, I thought. Mm. Unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> Been really, really interesting. We haven't spoken. Will you come back and we'll do a bit on rugby another time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How is everything at Leicester in a nutshell? Getting there? Getting there is a good way to put it, yeah. Um, obviously, we haven't been doing very well for a few years now. We've underachieved in in our eyes. And I've recommitted myself to the club, um, which I was happy to do because I could see where the club's going to be in a, in a few years' time. Um, and I wouldn't have put pen to paper if I didn't believe that. And like I said again, for me to actually sign, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go through what I've been through again at Leicester anytime soon so for me to have done that I can see a light at the end of the tunnel should I say um, I won't go into too much depth about what's going to happen and, and why but the only way is up isn't it let's be honest like we're, we're coming together slowly and I think you can see that in the performances that we're putting in um, 21 points against top of the table in 12 minutes or 16 minutes or something which isn't bad mm. Um, and obviously we let it slip. So we obviously, we're asking us, and again with the fans, like you, you, we are going back and reviewing these games and trying to find out why it wasn't working. Um, but I think we, we're slowly getting to the bottom of the, the problems and we're addressing them, having those honest conversations, mm. which are quite tough to have. Um, but yeah, in a, in a nutshell, it's, it's looking positive. Good on you. Who blinked first in the go in the negotiations? Not me, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Work to improve on. He's um, got 100% death there. Always, yeah. yeah, the game needs a strong Leicester, certainly in this country. So good luck with all that. We've got a couple of minutes for a quick, perfect pour mm. 
our weekly test in 119 and a half seconds because that's how long it takes. To pour the perfect pint of Guinness. Uh, New Year's resolutions, either personal or within the game of rugby. Have you got anything that you'd like to my, my, your foot in a bucket? Mine personally was to, to have more honest, straight to conversations, not not skirt around issues, be very much okay. like... We started with a bang today. Yeah, we've, we've, we've been clear about that. Um, yeah. And I think, um, well, in... In rugby, I'd love to just see if they can organise scrums a little bit better so we can all work out what the, f- <laughs> what the fuck's going on. It would be quite good. Better scrums, please, yeah. from Hask. Ellis. Um, personal personal, and within the game. Personal note. Perfect as you are. Yeah, as perfect as I am. Where, tr- colour, where things that aren't matching. Where more <laughs> can you, can you mix up the game? palette? Can you mix yeah, up the he, palette? He left the colour coordinate. Um, I don't know, maybe see my family a bit more. Um, nice touch. Hopefully. And within um, the game? Within the game. Work harder, be more diligent, I guess. So I'm on a personal note. I haven't got anything, a resounding issue play with rugby. For yeah, they can. Yeah, I'd love to play more for England. Thanks Stick for bringing it up. I haven't got that many caps. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> cheers, Still mate. in and around. Yeah. Still um, in and around. No, nah, yeah, I haven't got a resounding issue with the game. I mean, I'll, I'll adapt as it comes. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, I can stay around as long as I stood. <laughs> Good. The cockroach. The cockroach. Yeah, you can't stamp to me. <laughs> Do you know what they call me? This is. Uh, I mean, again, I've just steered myself in the eye, but I, I, I was described once in a paper or by a fan site. There's like some poisonous fan sites out. There. I'm not going to give them the names, but they like used to go in so hard. I was even like mentioning the caption of how much they hate me. Like their, their profile was like da da da. I'm mugging off James Haskell. There was. I was that. I incited that much passion. And honestly, do you know how many fucks I gave? None. Because it made. No, I just loved it that I was that popular. Oh, I'm popular. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what I was going to say now. What was, what was I talking about? You were on about the website I started. Oh, yeah. I can't remember now. What about. is the website you started? The one slagging off ass. No. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Used to, no. You, were, you, were you doing some coaching? You're oh, a baby I've got, rhino. I've got a baby rhino thing going, yeah. That. Again, that's for more sort of grassroots side of things, trying to prevail the the youngsters who don't really get the opportunity. I plugged that on social for you, didn't I? My boy. Oh, well, who do I invite? After, after me begging you for... Well, no, no, days. I just I wasn't sure what it was to nah, start with, you know. You're never getting, never getting endorsed when I ask and you're paying some cash or a coffee. Straight business. So loyalty, no, loyalty. There's no loyalty coffee. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. His agent business. says no straight, coffee anymore. Straight business. Um, I, I tell you what I was going to say, in rugby, my, my resolution would be, in regards to training and clubs, would be... Uh, doing things not out of fear, but doing things because they need to be done. So, you know, uh, people talk about player burnout and stuff like that. It's, it's never to do with the game time. Boys always want to play games. It's to do with the training and it's to do with getting the balance right between rest and recovery and the teams that are more successful are the ones that are braver mm-hmm. with going, you know, we're going to do this here. We don't need to do this here, here and getting the performance and getting, getting it right and sticking to that and having sometimes a bit of fear that if the game doesn't go that well, it doesn't mean we have to beat the crap out of each other on a Tuesday. Um, you know, because we're not going to play well on a Saturday. That, that's, you know, I think, yeah, that's one. I think my, my other one would be use more psychology in rugby as opposed to just brute force physical changes things because, you know, why a team wins one week and, and suddenly, you know, uh, loses the next week. Yeah. And they've, they've trained exactly the same way, done everything else like that. Obviously, they've got the unknown of playing in opposition. But it's the consistency of like saying throwing a lead away, you know, that, that is a sort of psychological side. I bet most teams turn around and look at it, analyse it, but we're going to train harder. How are you going to fix that? We're going to train hard this week. We're going to work harder. We're not going to let that happen again. Mm, all fuck. you're doing, yeah, but all you're doing is repeating behaviours that lead to you not succeeding. Whereas what a psychologist or someone looking at you could get would create an, an environment where you identify when you're going along that path. Yep. And that's what I said, my, my feedback for the World Cup was England when I went, I, to be honest, I don't think you could have done any more. The only, the only element that maybe, and Eddie was already doing more of that than any other coach I worked with, is, is the mental side because of the, you know, the difference between New Zealand wasn't because of people playing their final, uh, you know, semi-final week early, or final week early, bollocks. There's no such mm. thing as playing that. You play the game. Yes, there was some hangover physically, but the way they trained that week, the way they were looked after, I, I believe from what I saw, that there wasn't going to be physically wrong. So what's the difference? Why come out to South Africa differently? Well, maybe it's a psychological element. Were, were they nervous? Were they not? Whoever it might be, I don't know. I wasn't involved. But that should be looked at. And I think that could be a massive thing in rugby. Let's go mental instead of physical, first and first and foremost. Drink to that? Not for him. He's yeah, not into yeah, it. Yeah. I'm not, not my thing, but yeah, I'm, I'm open to it. Until we find you the right person. Until. Any psychologist who, who specialises in sport, you reckon they could tame, tame the baby rhino, <laughs> help him develop, please reach out. Don't reach out to me. I won't reply. But... <laughs> Right, doing group. your bits. Um, two quick shout-outs. First two, um, Fats, who's obviously, we mentioned a bit earlier on, um, 
Michael Fatilofa from Worcester, get well soon from mm. all of us. Wish you all the best, well mate. Yeah. Particularly Thank given everything we've been saying. I wish you all the best. Um, that's nicely put. And I think um, we should do next time we do a live show or something like that. We'll, we'll have a all the audience will get a donation yeah, thing done. Yeah, let's do that. Maybe we can set up a, a, a House of Rugby Just Giving page on uh, our Facebook page. That is and a get very people good idea. to to donate because we've got we get three hundred thousand listeners per episode for this. We've had something like nine million people watch and listen. So if everyone gave a pound to that, you'll make a massive dramatic difference. Fucking so hell. yeah, we can maybe maybe do that. Like even if it's a quid, it'll all, it'll all add up. Um, so maybe we get House of Rugby Joe. We'll, we'll set that up on the, the Facebook page. The other person I just wanted to quickly give a shout out to is Rob Burrows from Leeds in the Rugby League. <sighs> Um, yeah, we are still so, got more of a do you, talking point. No, I'm just saying he's obviously gained yeah. so much the league, but then I think league's a bit of a different. It is to it's the union. A, same church, different choirs kind of philosophy. But there is a specific event happening at Leeds Rhinos where Rob Burrows, um, Kevin Sinfield, and Jamie Peacock are Seen coming that, off the yeah. bench for the last couple of minutes of the game against yeah. the Bradford Bulls. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Christ alive. That's going to be emotional. But, but um, that that situation, so so the Rob Burrow situation was I was, I don't know where I was, but I, I looked at it, read that. And he's 37, mm. so I'm 34, right? And I, and I literally looked at that situation. And, and that for me was the biggest shining example of live for the moment, live now, mm. give everything 100%. Don't, don't shit your pants. You know, don't, don't freak out about... Um, you know, the, the future, do everything, focus on now, obviously plan ahead, don't, don't go mad, don't go into sp spend all your money, but be, be be sensible. But for God's sake, if you want to do something, do it now. Do if you want to learn something, do it now. If you want to play someone, if you want to speak to someone, see someone, do it now. Because I tell you what, you know, I, I sitting back going, well, maybe, maybe when I'm 50 or something like that, a 37. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, you know. Three years from that, now. That's right. Yeah. That's, and, 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 for, and, you know, why, you know, why, what, you know, is that, is it, was it genetic? Was it something, was it brought on by playing? What no one will know. No one will know. And the point is that there's more and more people in sport ha happening. It's happened to people outside the rider world. I know it's not exclusive to sport. But I, I, honestly, I used him in about five or six conversations. And I thought to go with him because you know, I know he will obviously, like the legend of the game he is, he, he'll power on and fight all the way through and everything else. But for someone like me, it was an absolute wake-up call. And there were things that I was thinking about not doing and doing. When I think, do you know what? You know, whoever is in control of whatever this or fate or whatever you want to call it, when your time is your time, or when you're going to get this stuff and struck down, mm. and it happens to people, and especially with cancer now, it's like mm -hmm. it's not if, it's when, and it's yeah. like one in two people. You've got to live and maximize. So I agree, like you signing, getting the best deal, playing the best rugby, doing everything you can do, leaving no stone unturned, you being the best at what you do, the present, whatever it might be. No, no, genuine. <laughs> best best businessman, yeah. presenter, yeah. whatever it might be. You, you just got to live it because you yeah. can't turn around and say, oh, do you know what? I'll do it in five years. But most of all, me, you probably like, haven't got five years. Well, you never know, do you? But mostly right. just enjoy it, innit? Yeah. yeah. I remember when we went on tour to Oz and I was shitting myself by getting that tattoo for the first time on my foot. And you were like, fuck off, I'll come with you. Yeah. And that sort of opened my eyes what to did you get? the kangaroos. Kangaroos. But, um, <laughs> well, you both got kangaroos. Yeah, you did it together, yeah. And me, That's not what forever bonded. Me, bonded. Yeah. me Haskell, and Ozzy all went and yeah. got it. But and I got a cupcake, didn't I, with Chloe's name on it? She didn't friend. like it. <laughs> <laughs> She's um, like, why have you got a cupcake? I was like, I've always wanted a cupcake. Well, I'm not called cupcake. I was like, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. <laughs> but yeah, like, as you said, she loved the, it in the, end. the Rob Burr stuff and even the, the Dolly Weir stuff. Yeah. And, Humbo, there's so many examples and you stand to Vestes and all like yeah, yeah. there's uh, uh, Chester Williams the other day yeah, yeah. it's all, like all that sort of stuff and Ruben like Corbin. I said about loyalty I'm not saying that there's absolutely no loyalty left in the game because these people are going to try and get looked after yeah. as best as the ability yeah. you see all the people pulling together but then what about the people who aren't absolute legends of the sport this happens to that you don't hear about that's what I'm yeah that's what I'm more concerned about Beautifully put. And our very best to Michael and to Rob. And do check it out, actually. It's, it will be an amazingly emotional um, scene at um, Leeds Rhinos when that happens. I think in a couple of weeks' time, maybe sooner than that. Final question before we finish. Um, how proud are you of what you've done and where you've been and where you are now and what's to come? Oh, um, probably ask me that in 10 years' time. Cause you... But in this moment now, given the story that we've been through tonight and... You know the challenges and, and and the way that you're now living the dream. Um, sometimes, like I said, when I go back home, I, I do pinch myself to think, "Fucking hell, I've I've done all right here." Um, but you always want more, no matter what. Yeah. I've actually got a friend who recently said to me, he was in the he's in the academy. Um, then he made his sort of like bench debut, and then he played first team, and he was never he's never happy with it. Yeah, I'm like, fucking hell, mate! You've done all right to get to where you are, and he's a class player, class bloke. Everyone really likes him, 
but he's he's never really happy about it. I'm like, just take 10 minutes to appreciate what you're doing. And it's easy for me to say that to him, but then I thought to myself, do I ever sit down yeah. and think, fucking hell, you, you've done all right yourself. But that's the problem with sport and the psychological side of it. You always want more because you're in that environment where you're you're driven to never stop achieving. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm happy with where I am, but I'm more excited about where I can get to if that makes any sense. Do you know what it's you should do? Sense. Do you know what you should do? Because one of my regrets on the reti retirement thing, when I think about, was not celebrating enough of what I achieved. Never happened. I was never satisfied with any. I talked about my career. Not satisfied with my yeah. career. Not satisfied with lots of things. But I tell you what, it's not about talking about it. It's not about telling anyone about it. But on those quiet days off or after a win, if you take your sofa home and you sit in the car, just allow yourself five minutes just to go, do you know what? <laughs> I've played for my country, I've done this, I've played tonight, I've won, I've got paid to do it, I've been with my friends, I've got, I'm healthy, I've done it, and just enjoy it for that moment. And then Sunday, put your feet up, Monday you go again and you forget about it. But but honest to God, celebrate every little bit of victory you can do, because I promise you, when it's over, it, the one thing, it's always important to be on to the next thing, but you have to celebrate it and you have to do it in the right way. And I can honestly, even if it's just away from it, even if you don't want to admit it yourself, because you're not an arrogant bloke, you don't want to tell people, just have five minutes. Even if you write it down to yourself, just go, you know what, I've done this and this and this, and remember it, because suddenly you'll be over and you'll be like, did I ever fucking even do that? And, yeah. you know, and, and then you won't be satisfied with what you're doing next. Therein is your free New Year's resolution. That's the only free thing you'll get from half. Yeah, through yeah. that. <laughs> It'll be short. The invoice will come through later. Very true. <laughs> I've found note on which to end. You're welcome. Positivity. Ellis, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very, very much, Steve, for coming up. I hope you'll come and see us again. I will. Sometime I will. soon. The shower of shambles that is. House of Rugby. <laughs> but, I mean, the fact that you even got your foot in a bucket yeah. sort of sums just up. To just to make sure everyone actually realises. You have that literally have got, got your foot yeah. no in an ice bucket. There's no beers. <laughs> um, very much looking forward to next week's guest as well. The geezer mm. is in the building next week. Uh, former Wasps, Quinns, scrum half, uh, former England Sevens coach, now coaching the USA Sevens side. One of the best coaches I work with, actually. Mike is he Potter. really? Yeah, with the Sevens, yeah, seven stuff with England. I, I, if he'd that pathway journey from you doing that to, to yeah. playing rugby was one of the best things and developed me more so than anything I've ever been involved you did in. Sevens. Absolutely, yeah, legend. yeah, yeah. In a few times, mate. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Uh, look forward to seeing Geezer next week. Ellis, thank you very much indeed. Go well. Personally, go well with Leicester. Look forward to seeing you back in action soon. We'll see all of you in seven days' time. Have a good one in between.